Episode 261, Lone Player. Kaleidoscope celebration dinner was extravagant and star-studded. Under luxurious chandeliers, artists chatted and held wine glasses as the hall resounded with elegant music. The waiters weaved their way around the guests as they balanced their serving trays. Every now and then, they would witness famous celebrities exchange glances and gossip about different agencies. That was because Kaleidoscope CEO Eric Roberts had not yet arrived. Although Kaleidoscope was usually united, they couldn't help but discussing the incidents concerning Amy. Since they weren't discussing this with outsiders, they didn't see a problem with it. A couple of female artists were deep in discussion about Amy and Emma. Tonight, even the winners of Best Actor and Best Actress can't steal the limelight from Amy and Emma. Hey, side are you on? Between the two, I'd pick Emma, because it's obvious that Amy's heart no longer belongs to Kaleidoscope. I don't even want to associate with her anymore. From now on, I'm siding with Emma. By the way, have you noticed that Caitlin Roberts won't be attending tonight? The woman being spoken to looked around and nodded her head. I just noticed. Why isn't she here? Amy ordered some people to beat her up. From what I've heard, her injuries are so bad that she can't even get out of bed. That's awful. Meanwhile, some male artists were also deep in conversation. I have a question I want to ask. Would you guys choose a woman with a curvy body or long legs? One of them is sexy, while the other is cool and laid back. Tough decision. You really think a long legs has a chance? From a man's point of view, I think Mr. Roberts will definitely stand by Amy's side. He needs to protect the internal stability of the agency. I disagree. I don't think Mr. Roberts is the type that cares what others think. Everyone respectfully shared their opinions on the matter without insulting any of the parties involved. The Kaleidoscope family never insulted their own. Amy was the only one to do such a thing. Quick, look, I think Amy's here. The warning of Amy's arrival came as a hushed whisper just before she appeared in their line of sight. She was wearing a long, black, deep V-dress, which was wrapped tightly around her gorgeous figure. She strutted into the hall like a model, wearing stiletto heels as the train of her dress dragged across the floor behind her. Her figure was indeed superb. She knew how to use her gorgeous features to her advantage by wearing clothes that highlighted her curves. Many of the men couldn't help but react when they saw her saunter in. A few of them quickly drank the icy cold wine in their hands to cool off the fire burning inside them. She was pleased with their reactions because, in her own eyes, she ruled the runway. It was only natural for everyone to be captivated by her. It gave her so much confidence and she felt invincible. However, as she scanned her eyes across the hall, she realized Emma was nowhere to be seen. She wondered, is she too afraid to appear in front of me and battle it out on the same stage? Everyone knew how beautiful Amy was. Her gorgeous features, coupled with her slightly wild personality, made her very intimidating. She had a strong, regal presence and had enjoyed many years of attention on the runway. She couldn't even think of another entertainer that she felt was on her level. As a result, she always looked dazzling and held her head high in confidence. Hey, Amy's arrived, said one of the artists. I'm so jealous of her figure. I wish I had her boobs and butt. No wonder they say comparing yourself to other people is unhealthy. It doesn't matter what Emma shows up wearing. I don't think she'll be able to top this. You never know. She does have Eric as her manager. If anyone can help her top Amy, 
It's him. You're still questioning what's going to happen? If Mr. Roberts appears tonight as the CEO of Kaleidoscope, then Emma doesn't stand a chance. He's definitely going to side with Amy. The artists in attendance gathered in groups to discuss the heated topic. Their anxiety was running high as they tried to decide whether Emma would even show up. Is she coming? Would I know? The celebration dinner continued, and guest performers appeared one after another. Some sang hit songs, and others did dance performances. There were even eye candy actors that simply stood on the stage. Emma must be so afraid that she decided not to appear, Amy exclaimed amongst the crowd. She wasn't afraid of people hearing her. Everyone around her was stunned and slightly annoyed by her comment. A little while later, there was a commotion at the main entrance as Eric finally made his entrance. From the outfit he was wearing, it was obvious that he was appearing as the CEO of Kaleidoscope. A few people were disappointed. They had anticipated something else. At that time, Amy's lips curved upwards into a smile. She knew that there was no way she would lose. Everyone once again started discussing their thoughts. Amy must be feeling like a winner. I mean, Emma didn't even show up. Check out the look on Amy's face. Wait, it's not right. The president bought a woman with him. That... Isn't that Emma? Where? The one wearing a business suit behind him. Everyone began to notice that Emma wasn't wearing anything glamorous and wasn't making a grand appearance. She simply followed behind Eric dressed in business attire. But who was Eric going to stand with as the winner tonight? As soon as Amy noticed Emma, her smile turned stale. She wasn't happy with what she saw. Eric was hinting that Emma did not come to Kaleidoscope because of her. And just because Amy wanted to compete with Emma, it didn't mean that Emma was willing to play along. A moment later, the winner of the Best Actor Award approached him, holding a wine glass as he expressed his gratitude. Just as the actor was about to do a toast with him, Eric glanced at Emma questioningly, like he was asking her for permission to drink. She was surprised, but quickly understood, so she nodded her head. As soon as the actor saw this, he couldn't hold back his laughter. <laughs> Sir Robert, are you asking Emma for permission? What, is she in control of how much you drink? Well, when I was her manager, she complained that I was a bit too strict, so I suggested that we reverse our roles so she can be my manager instead, he explained as he clinked glasses with the actor. I never imagined Emma had the potential to be a manager. The actor couldn't help but tease. I've never seen you being controlled by someone else. This is quite a refreshing scene to witness. The actor then looked at Emma and said, Thank you, Emma, for giving me the opportunity to witness this. Episode 262, The Only One. Emma raised her glass in response. The young actor was handsomely dressed in a white cocktail suit. He looked at the inseparable couple and down at the wedding rings on their fingers. Although he knew of their true relationship, he simply sighed and said, Mr. Roberts, you're a lucky man. Emma understood the hidden meaning and gave him a sidelong glance. But the man simply smiled and raised his glass to her once again. Emma, if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to look for me. Especially if it's about breaking into the film and television industry. Thank you. Everyone was shocked by the scene unfolding in front of them. On the surface, Amy appeared to have won because the CEO of Kaleidoscope had appeared. But he brought Emma along with him 
and even introduced her to some of the most famous artists, opening opportunities for her in other industries. He was also extremely affectionate towards Emma. Of the artists once again started gossiping. Hey, did you notice the rings on their fingers? But from the looks of it, they don't look like full rings. Plus, when I watched Emma's interview on Talkmaster, I remember her saying that she likes LM. So it's unusual for her to be wearing one of their designs. Yes, it's not weird for Emma to be wearing it. But when have you ever seen Mr. Roberts wear a ring? Maybe he bought one to wear because he saw hers. If that's the case, that's so sweet. Did you notice she's getting a lot of attention just standing there behind him? She doesn't need to wear anything fancy to catch everyone's eye. That's a given. Who wouldn't be dazzling standing next to Mr. Roberts? From the moment that Eric appeared with Emma, Amy had become completely overshadowed. It didn't matter how bright her presence was. There was no way she could compete with the star power of the It couple. Everyone felt Emma's achievements were nothing short of miraculous. What would normally take someone decades to accomplish, she had managed to do in three to four months. She went from being an outdated top model to approaching the top position in the industry. She was still missing one last step to get there. But no matter how many steps she had to take, she had no reason to worry. She had one of the most powerful people in the entertainment industry as her personal manager. But even with all this, no one felt it was all just a stroke of luck. Every move she made caused a stir and attracted a lot of attention. Everyone had seen how she'd fought her way to where she was. So it wasn't odd at all that she managed to attract his attention. However, unbeknownst to everyone, he'd been involved from the start. A top female actress also approached Eric. She then turned to Emma, smiled, and said, I really want to raise a glass to you. Up until that point, Emma had already drunk a fair bit. Normally, her limit was one glass, and she'd already gone beyond that. Eric looked down at her red cheeks and stopped the actress. I'll take it. She can't handle any more. The actress smiled as she clinked her glass against his. Although she hated the fact that a man like this was taken... She couldn't bring herself to hate Emma, since she'd seen how much hard work Emma had put in. Naturally, everyone treated Emma as their junior. Although she wasn't the youngest, for those at the top of the entertainment industry, she was still slightly lower in rank. Many who had been in the entertainment industry had to battle and scrap their way to the top, and it wasn't pretty. Who says I can't handle it? Emma said as she held tightly to Eric's arm. He did not resist and allowed her to cling to him before leading her to the side to rest. Plenty of people saw this and started squealing in excitement. It was obvious that they were partially revealing their relationship. All that was missing was an official announcement. Of course, everyone believed he was serious with her. Before Emma... He'd never had any rumors or scandals with another woman. She was the first, the first one to make everyone jealous. Hey, did you notice the expression on Amy's face? Said one of the artists. Let's not talk about it. When she first arrived, I seriously thought she would win for sure. Guys. I'm feeling a bit conflicted. We know that Kaleidoscope has a culture where we help each other. If Amy stays with the company, that's not going to be easy for me to do. Think about what happened to Caitlin. I know, right? Kaleidoscope's employees don't all have to be the best of friends, but we're definitely not okay with going around hurting others. Amy heard the discussions that were happening around her. The hurtful taunts and ruthless laughter seemed to all be directed at her. Over the years, she'd done so much for Kaleidoscope and turned down Star King for them. But 
What did she get in return? Little Emma, all by herself, was enough to make everyone turn their backs on her. With this thought, Amy suddenly gathered her courage and walked past everyone straight over to Eric and Emma. Mr. Roberts, I've been in Kaleidoscope for many years and have never done anything to hurt the agency. But today, I don't feel like it's the same Kaleidoscope I once knew. I don't understand. Kaleidoscope has always had high standards, but she... Amy pointed to Emma, who was sitting next to Eric. What right does she have to join Kaleidoscope? I'm sure everyone here at Kaleidoscope is bothered by this. After hearing this claim from Amy, he swept his eyes from her to the people standing behind him. They innocently shrugged their shoulders, gesturing that the so-called everyone at Kaleidoscope did not include them. He leaned back on the sofa. His eyes were sharp and contained a sense of ridicule and contempt. I'm really happy that you've come to talk to me, he said. It lets me know how threatened you're feeling about your position. Don't tell me you aren't being biased towards her, said Amy. We're all same agency, but how come she gets to have you as her personal manager? No artist has ever been given this kind of special treatment. Why are you treating Emma differently? Many of the people who heard her spiel admired her bravery. Others felt she was rude and deserved a slap. Do I need to report to you about who I want to manage? He asked. Don't you think your actions make it hard for you to convince others? She replied. Hard to convince others? He asked, directing the question towards the people standing behind Amy. Everyone responded by shaking their heads. Sir, that's absolute nonsense, the crowd replied. Eric, you're being a hypocrite, cried Amy. You've always said that you hate people that play games, yet you're the one who plays the most games. Amy, someone yelled, wanting to stop her. Let her speak, Eric said coldly, waving his hand and gesturing for them not to stop her. Episode 263, Simply a Famous Model I've done so much for Kaleidoscope and turned down Star King for so many years. Even if it's not something to take credit for, I should at least be acknowledged for my hard work. Instead, my position in Kaleidoscope is below that of a newcomer. Is this how Kaleidoscope operates? Before Emma arrived, Kaleidoscope had always been just and fair. Eric, what happened to you? Amy appeared to have found an outlet to release everything she was unhappy about as she quickly spoke her mind. The expressions on the faces of everyone present was uneasy. They all knew, even though he appeared to be unaffected, the hostile vibe emanating from his body could not be hidden. When he opened his mouth to respond, Emma stretched out her hand and stopped him. She's just one person. There's no need to get upset. Since I'm your manager today, let me handle it. He looked deep into her eyes. In his piercing look was also a sense of trust. Emma was done sitting back and listening. She wasn't just going to stand by and listen to someone hurl insults at Eric. She slowly stood up. She wasn't wearing high heels, but her presence completely overshadowed Amy, forcing her to take a few steps back. What are you planning to do? Amy asked. Are you going to slap me again? Did you think you would have gotten where you are today without Kaleidoscope? Emma asked in a cold tone. I also helped get Kaleidoscope to where they are today, said Amy. You supported Kaleidoscope, 
Emma burst out laughing before saying, <laughs> You think too highly of yourself. Everyone here relied on Kaleidoscope to get where they are today. Did you think, without Kaleidoscope backing you, people would even take you into consideration? Your ability to handle Starking gives you value in the agency. But it's not hard for Kaleidoscope to create a second Amy, a third Amy, and even a fourth. There are plenty of people waiting to join Kaleidoscope. Do you think it's that easy to create an international supermodel? Amy asked back confidently. Yes, it's not easy, but Kaleidoscope has a Best Actor from the Gold Star Awards and a Best Actress from the American Indie Awards. We have celebrities in Hollywood, New York, and bands that break records every year in sales. Kaleidoscope also owns its own filming studio and creative agency. With all this, do you still think Kaleidoscope needs your support? Really? Emma spoke powerfully as she questioned Amy. Everything she said not only made Amy sound worthless, but also lifted the value of all the stars that Kaleidoscope represented. Everyone nodded in agreement. They realized this woman, who appeared weak on the surface, was like a powerful heroine when she spoke up. Amy was speechless for a moment. All she could do was open her eyes wide in shock, but not a single word came out of her mouth. After quite some time, she finally laughed. Since you're aware that there are so many amazing superstars in Kaleidoscope, why would Eric choose to be your manager? Kaleidoscope superstars possess a variety of skills and are extraordinarily capable. Do they need his support? After hearing this praise from Emma, the superstars present felt their moods uplifted even more. Even if someone had the tiniest discomfort toward Eric becoming Emma's manager, at that moment, they no longer felt it was an issue. So, you're admitting that you're not capable enough? Yes. So why are you fighting with me? Emma asked. In other words, Emma was admitting that she wasn't very capable. But if Amy was so capable, then there was no reason she would need to devalue herself to fight against someone below her unless she had doubts about her own capabilities. After hearing these words, the people around them suddenly felt confident with Emma's ability to fight. Every word she said took Amy down a notch, rendering her speechless. Plus, Mr. Roberts is my manager, Emma continued. If someone were to complain then only I would have the right to do so because we've signed a contract. What right do you think you have? To you, he's the CEO of Kaleidoscope, and I'm looking forward to witnessing how the CEO decides to deal with you. Emma returned to her original spot and sat down beside Eric. His powerful presence was completely awe-inspiring. Everyone then turned their attention to Eric. Calmly, he announced, Your brand, DC, has been utilizing Kaleidoscope's designer, hasn't it? I will be taking him back. Starting today, I don't want to hear of you using any of Kaleidoscope's resources. I want to see how much you can achieve on your own. I will completely dismiss your team. However... You can keep your manager. Let's play a game and try freezing you out for a few years. I want to see if Kaleidoscope shares will plummet tomorrow because of you. Everyone was shocked. Although they knew Eric was going to punish Amy, they didn't expect him to be so straightforward. He actually froze an international supermodel in front of everyone at Kaleidoscope Celebration Dinner. Complaining in front of me? I'll make you return to nothing.
Amy was stunned. Her eyes grew wide and her body stiffened. She'd never imagined he would go this far. She thought she was more important to Kaleidoscope, but in reality, she was simply a famous but replaceable model. Even at that point, Eric did not feel it was enough. He turned to Emma and nudged her forward. Amy has been doubtful of you from the start. For now, I don't need a manager, so you can return to being Emma. Go ahead and battle it out with her. Right here? Emma was surprised. Right here, in front of everyone. Eric continued in a gentle voice. I believe in you. Well, what do you want me to do? Eric glanced at Amy and back at Emma before replying, You simply need to go and get changed. The artists standing behind them were hyped up because of Eric's suggestion. They all started discussing their thoughts excitedly. Oh God, we're about to witness a showdown. Sir Robert should have allowed her to attend as a model from the start. This is going to be interesting. Amy's strong points are her curves, and Emma's are her long legs. I wonder which one's going to come out on top. Why do I feel that Eric is doing this on purpose? Is he afraid that Emma will lose? Emma can be just as good as Amy. Of course, Emma had already promised earlier that she would put up a good fight. So... Emma stood up in front of everyone. With her head held high, she said confidently, Wait here. Episode 264 Like the Night Sky Amy may not have felt great about some areas of her life, but when it came to her body... She was extremely confident. If there was an official ranking for the world's most beautiful breasts, she would have been in the top three. If there was an official ranking for the world's most beautiful butt, she would also have been in the top three. On the runway, these were the features she felt most confident about. She had never lost before. She refused to believe that Emma had any chance of winning against her, even if she had Eric backing her. Amy seemed confused with Eric's suggestion and hadn't fully grasped the seriousness of being frozen. All she was focused on was winning against Emma. Meanwhile, the other artists present were waiting to witness a good show. Kaleidoscope had never experienced an internal battle like this before, and seeing employees of the same agency tear each other apart was a rare sight. They were surprisingly anticipating it. For Kaleidoscope, Amy was a first. She had dared to challenge Eric in front of everyone, so her fate of getting frozen was no surprise. Yet, she remained calm and collected. She had no idea how dire of a situation she was being thrown into. She assumed that, even without Kaleidoscope, she still had Star King as a great alternative. While waiting for Emma, Eric stood up and returned to discuss a variety of projects. An upcoming movie with one of Kaleidoscope's film producers a hit song with a music producer, and scripts with a few actors. He didn't seem worried at all that Emma would embarrass the agency and make him look bad. However, there were a few actors that were a little worried. After all, Amy was the first person to light everything on the table with Kaleidoscope over the years, and she was quite charismatic. Mr. Roberts, Will Amy expose Kaleidoscope's internal dealings to outsiders? Hearing this query, Eric smiled and replied, If she plans to do that, 
she will need to prepare to part with $200 million, $100 million to compensate Kaleidoscope, and $100 million to compensate everyone affected by her claim. We'll simply do a little bit of PR, and the damage shouldn't be too much. In other words, she would have to be crazy to throw away money like that. With that money, she could live the rest of her life comfortably, even if she was no longer a model. Kaleidoscope had never experienced an internal betrayal over the years because the penalty was too high. At that moment, she stood amongst the crowd all on her own. No one wanted to talk to her. She sneered and thought, There's nothing wrong with me trying to fight to win and avoid losing. Just wait and see, she said aloud. When Emma comes back, I'll be the one looking down on all of you. At the same time, the public were also paying attention to the two women. It was rumored that they would both be at the event that night, but because Kaleidoscope didn't invite media to the dinner, the public couldn't receive any updates. Some paparazzi had even disguised themselves as waiters and hid pinhole cameras on their body to try and get information, but were kicked out by the strict security. But fans on the internet wanted to get the scoop on what was happening at the event, and especially who was winning between the two that night. Emma had more fans than Amy because she was currently extremely popular. However, she didn't appear to be someone who would put up a good fight. On the other hand, although Amy didn't have as many fans, she was well experienced in the modeling industry so she could easily deal with three enemies at once, let alone one. There wasn't much expectation for the outcome. Everyone expected both parties to suffer a loss. The public's discussion started to heat up a bit on social media. I think Amy has a dominating stage presence. Emma's a little blacking in comparison. The previous commenter must be crazy. If stage presence is determined by dominance, what about performance ability? No matter what, Emma won't win. Look at all the famous forums. Emma's already being defamed like crazy. You're still trying to argue with me? Ready to eat your words. No matter if Emma wins or not, it won't change the fact that the CEO of Kaleidoscope is her manager. Of course... If Amy ends up losing this time, it will be quite embarrassing. I support Amy. I support Emma. Meanwhile, inside the hall at Kaleidoscope Celebration Dinner, everyone was straining their necks as they waited in anticipation. Amy looked at the empty doorway as her lips slowly curved upwards, and she wondered if Emma had run away in fear. However, just as everyone was discussing why Emma had not yet reappeared, someone suddenly screamed in excitement. At that moment, Emma stepped onto the red carpet, wearing the slightly transparent, starry sky ball gown. Her ink black hair was tied up, and her makeup was delicate and simple, which was the opposite of Amy's thick makeup. She only had a little bit of lipstick on. However, the gown on her body was magnificent, like the night sky. No nightscape could compare to the scene on the red carpet. She walked down the red carpet as the hem of her gown dragged behind her. The diamonds on the gown sparkled like little stars. It was such a jaw-dropping sight that the people witnessing the scene gasped in surprise. In comparison, Amy's appearance began to look cheap. She was beginning to look more and more like a hooker standing on the side of the street trying to attract business. On the other hand, Emma's breasts looked classy and voluptuous underneath the layers of transparent tulle. When looking back at Amy again, 
her breasts looked saggy in comparison. No one had ever noticed that Emma also had nice breasts because they'd always focused on her long legs. Oh, God, Emma's body's amazing, someone exclaimed. Amy's expression's gone completely stiff. I'm now confident saying that Emma will be even more successful than Amy. I don't think Amy could have made this ball gown look this good. I can already tell she doesn't have long enough legs to support the gown. Can you imagine how Emma would look if she wore Amy's dress? She would have an unexplainable cool and mystique about her. Everyone nodded their heads in agreement. Even Amy felt a little inferior when faced with the current Emma. As a model, she could interpret the look in people's eyes. If only one person's eyes looked a certain way, it probably represented a biased opinion. But when everyone looked the same, then what they were thinking was the truth. Everyone's eyes were upon Emma. They were shocked by her appearance. God, I finally realized the brand of clothing Emma's wearing, said one of the artists. This gown is more than eight figures. It's the brand used by the British royal family. It looks so beautiful on her. If she were on the runway right now, I probably wouldn't be able to resist, even though I might not be able to afford it. Emma's really good at influencing people to like what she's wearing, not just the person wearing it. She's nothing like Amy. Whenever I see Amy on stage, I forget she's even wearing any clothes. All she knows how to do is show herself off. She has no idea how to truly exhibit a piece of clothing. Episode 265, Buyer's Remorse. Where did things go wrong? Amy asked herself. She'd always been on runways, both big and small and had experienced a variety of battles. So why did she feel self-conscious when it came to Emma? She analyzed Emma from head to toe and realized she had never seen legs as perfect as hers. And it was not surprising that, because she'd worked out to achieve perfect legs, she also had a great butt. So the two things Amy was the most proud of Emma also had. But the thing that Emma had, she would never be able to possess in an entire lifetime. Under the luxurious lighting, everyone's focus was on Emma. Amy couldn't bring herself to accept the outcome, so she just fell onto the floor. But not surprisingly, no one stretched out their hand to help her up. What's the point? said one of the artists. She brought this on herself. Amy's so arrogant. She always thought Emma would lose to her. The fact that she ended up this way is not surprising. Emma's more well-suited for the runway than Amy. I've yet to see a piece of clothing that Emma doesn't wear well. She has a model figure. At that moment, Amy no longer heard anything because allowing herself to hear the comments would also allow her to feel hurt. She'd always killed it on international runways, but that was because she wore clothes specifically chosen for her body by her designer. But there were a lot of styles that she couldn't pull off. Emma, on the other hand, was more versatile. She knew how to connect with her clothes and work them to highlight their features. Emma also had the same confidence that Amy had. She just chose to keep a low profile. Attendees even snapped photos of the two women on their phones and compared the two. One appeared cheap and sleazy, while the other was shockingly beautiful. Emma had made her way over to Eric and asked, What do you think? He responded, I'm starting to regret buying this gown for you. Right now, all I want to do is remove my jacket and wrap you up in it. 
Her face involuntarily turned red. Afterwards, he let go of her and ordered the security, please escort Miss Grace out of the building. No need. I can show myself out. Amy stood up from the floor in embarrassment. With her last bit of stubbornness, she made her way out of the hall. I'll never forget this humiliation. Amy's a sore loser, someone observed. It must be because she'd never imagined she'd be overshadowed by someone, so she suffered quite a blow. After Amy left, everyone tried to lighten the mood. Some even approached Emma to flirt with her. But before she could respond, Eric removed his jacket and wrapped it around her. Is it possible, everyone thought, that the infamous CEO of Kaleidoscope is feeling a little jealous because Emma's gown is too revealing? If he couldn't handle this, what would he do if Emma was to walk in an underwear show? Hey... Emma protested. Don't be jealous. Eric stood by her side and simply replied, Since you've returned to being the model, Emma, then I am naturally your manager again. Whatever your manager instructs you to do, you must obey. The artists around them laughed. It seemed this gown was the most regretful piece of clothing Eric had ever bought. The celebration dinner continued, but Eric put down his wine glass and said to Emma, Come to the waiting room. After giving his order, he turned to the people around him and told them he was popping out to take a phone call. Not long after, Emma used the bathroom as an excuse to head straight for the waiting room. However, just as she opened the door, a strong force pushed her against the wall, and she felt Eric's passionate kiss press against her lips. It was not until they were both out of breath that Eric stopped and looked down at her. If it wasn't for me trying to show Amy how good your body looked, I would never have bought you a gown like this. Emma giggled. Are you jealous? Once again, Eric pressed Emma against the wall and whispered in her ear, I'm not jealous. The problem is, you're too sexy. I'm afraid something might happen. Then should I get changed? Eric wanted to continue, but Emma placed her hands on top of his chest and said, Eric, there are a lot of people around. In the end, Eric simply nibbled Emma's ear for a little while before letting go. Hurry and come back out. Eric let go of Emma and left the waiting room. At that time, everyone at Kaleidoscope was talking about some photos online. They were comparison photos of Emma and Amy from not too long ago. Despite being in the same photo, Amy faded into the background behind Emma. People online had also expressed their opinions. Why is Amy so pitiful? Here I was being so trusting of her and having so much faith in her dominating presence on stage. Dominance means nothing when she appears different online and offline. No wonder she lost Emma. I finally know why Emma won. It's because she can wear any clothes. She is indeed amazing. I noticed these photos were released with bad intentions. The photos specifically targeted both of their chests. I'm sorry, but I must say Emma is the winner. It has nothing to do with her clothes. On the way home, Amy lay in the back seat and burst out crying. Meanwhile, sitting in the driver's seat, Charlene found herself unusually pleased with the result. She never expected Emma to have the ability to damage this woman so much. I want to kill Emma. I want this woman to be destroyed.
She screamed as she cried, all the while thinking, Do you actually think you still have a chance? In the past, she had multiple people following her around, ready to do her bidding. However, Eric had now dismissed her team. She had no idea that there was still more suffering headed her way. In order not to make Eric jealous, Emma changed into a long white dress before leaving the waiting room, escorted by Louise. As soon as everyone saw her, they couldn't help but tease. Emma got in trouble. Emma, did Mr. Roberts disapprove of you wearing the starry night ball gown? What a shame. It's expensive. Emma, just a moment ago, Mr. Roberts stepped out for a bit, and so did you. Did you guys? Seeing everyone teasing her, Eric squeezed through the crowd and pulled her over to his side to protect her. Of course, when faced with Eric, there was no one who would continue joking around. Episode 266, Surprise Performance Under the bright lights, Emma turned and glanced at Eric, who was currently scanning her body up and down in admiration. She looked at him curiously and opened her mouth to speak, but he beat her to it. I have some good news for you. Why? She looked at him questioningly, biting her lower lip. World-class designer Claude sent Kaleidoscope an invite. He wants you to attend the launch event for his new product, he explained. You're one of the few models in the world who has attracted his attention. She was shocked. How did that happen? A while ago, I sent in your information for the Most Beautiful Legs in the World Award, and Claude was fascinated by you. He grabbed two glasses of champagne from a passing waiter and handed one to her. It's a shame we missed out on the Victoria's Secret event. We still have next year, she comforted him. A year might be a long time, but I still have a chance to appear on their runway. He reached out and stroked her hair as he said in a gentle voice, You've already gotten this far in just four months. You're amazing. I have no doubt you'll be at the show next year. When are we leaving for the launch event? She asked. The 18th. I'll go with you and help you with anything you may need. Her eyes reddened as she held onto the champagne with one hand and grabbed his hand with the other. She discreetly intertwined her fingers with his Hey, Emma, the song you sang with Caitlin at the award ceremony was really nice. Will you sing it again? Everyone started getting hyped as they begged her to perform. She wasn't a singer, and with so many famous singers in attendance, she didn't want to embarrass herself. I only sing for fun, she replied. We don't care. Jake isn't an actor, but he often guest stars on shows. That's right. Go on. She looked at Eric helplessly as she pinched his hand in a silent plea for help. He simply smiled and said, Go ahead. She lifted her head and looked around as an idea popped into her mind. She grabbed his hand and dragged him toward the stage with her. Everyone murmured in surprise as they watched them. Wow, is Eric going to sing too? I wonder what he sounds like. I hope he's not tone deaf. The crowd quickly gathered around as the two got up on stage. She held onto a microphone and held out the other one to him, saying, You don't have to if you really don't want to. But I just, I know your work habits. But I don't know what else you're good at or your hobbies. He lifted his eyebrows. 
Doesn't the news tell you everything I am and am not capable of? You and I both know you can't trust everything you read. You really want to sing with me? He asked. She nodded. He didn't say anything. He just grabbed the microphone from her and set it to the side. He looked over at the violinist and said, Pass me the violin. The man quickly handed over his violin. He held the violin in his hands and looked at her. I don't want to sing. There are too many people here. I can play background music for you, though. You can't sing? she asked. I don't sing in front of just anyone. When we get home, I'll sing to you all you like. He chuckled before saying, Let's do this. The violin was one of his many skills, so those present weren't that surprised. However, none of them had ever heard him perform. Everyone watched as he placed the violin on his shoulder. A moment later, the prelude to the song Lost resonated as Emma lifted the microphone and began to sing. Although she wasn't a professional singer, she at least remembered all the lyrics, and her voice was pleasant to listen to. They reached the interlude a few minutes later. The melodious sound of the violin intertwined with the song, surprising most of the singers present. Eric's part was the most passionate part of the song. Emma was also mesmerized. She was used to seeing the suited-up CEO version of him who ruled the business world. It was rare to see this side of him, and the fact that he played the violin was a shock to her. She was in a daze and forgot that the song was only halfway through. He glanced at her, but she had already put her microphone down, content to listen to him play the rest of the song. He stared at her as he concentrated on playing. After he finished, he returned the violin to the violinist. In all the celebration dinners Kaleidoscope had hosted over the years, Eric had never let go like he had that night. Not only did he laugh and chat with everyone, he even performed on stage. After their impromptu performance, the rest of the celebration dinner seemed to go by in a flash. Emma had been in heels for hours, and her feet were killing her. Eric glanced at her, noticed her discomfort, and knelt down in front of her. Hop on. I'll carry you to the car. There are people outside, she said, trying to get him to stand up. You're in pain. You can either get on willingly, or I'll force you, he said. She sighed and climbed onto his back. People will talk. No one outside our agency knows the truth, and they wouldn't dare spread any rumor, he replied. The public won't hear anything until I want them to. We're very good at keeping secrets. Like her and Amy's comparison photo, he thought to himself. Emma was still unaware of the photo or the fact that Amy was severely beaten when she got back to her apartment. Eric was a firm believer in an eye for an eye, and Louise's plan had delivered on that perfectly. Even if Amy were to go to the hospital, she would have no idea who attacked her. Charlene was also unable to avoid a beating, but she knew it was Kaleidoscope's doing and didn't plan on sitting idly by. She planned on taking their secret with her to Star King so she could live happily ever after with her boyfriend. Episode 267, Misunderstandings. Inside the quiet and luxurious hotel, Lisa and Luke were enjoying dinner together. 
Luke kept his promise and didn't make things difficult for her, following their agreement not to meet his parents. However, she was so nervous about his suggestion to go to his house after dinner that her palms were sweaty. She wasn't as prepared to take their relationship to the next level as she thought. She browsed the news on her phone as she ate her steak in an effort to distract herself and came across a photo and news clip about Charlene being seriously beaten. She lifted her head and looked at Luke before showing him her phone. Was this Eric's doing? He glanced down slightly and said, confused, Apparently, your sources are faster than mine. She was surprised by his reaction and said, I'm just being nosy. I'm sure everything is under control and there's nothing you need to know. However, the fact that she found the information before the paparazzi and major media companies was a feat in itself. Is she stupid? Does she really think people will care about her complaining and whining like this? She asked. First, she was humiliated by Amy, and then punished by Kaleidoscope. Even Star King cut off their communication with her. What else can she do but go online? He looked at her as he put down his knife and fork. Are you going to spend our entire dinner talking about work? She felt herself get flustered again as she replied in a small voice, You make me nervous me? He asked, confused. You said we were going to your place after dinner, she said. Luke let out a small laugh. Weren't you the one who said you wanted to wait until you got married? Why would you assume anything's gonna happen tonight? She let out a sigh as she complained. It's my fault. Everyone knows that's what happens when a guy invites a girl to their house after a nice dinner like this. I'd never take that step without your permission, he said. She playfully threatened him with a fork. You wouldn't dare. He laughed and gestured for her to finish eating. She finally relaxed and enjoyed the rest of her delicious dinner. After dinner, they went back to his apartment. As promised, he didn't take things too far, but he did press her against the sofa and kiss her passionately. Her heart raced as they kissed like there was no tomorrow. After several minutes, he pulled away and went to the bathroom while she laughed quietly and pressed a hand against her chest, breathing hard. Inside the dark and dreary apartment, it was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Charlene was hiding in Amy's room. She had exposed everything online. But despite the beating, she only had minor injuries. She'd gone to her boyfriend's home following the assault and planned on exchanging Kaleidoscope secrets for a position in Starking. But when she got there, she caught him having sex with a couple of models. She had left distraught and brokenhearted, with nowhere to go. Though she still had a key to Amy's apartment and decided to hide out there, unsure of what to do next. She looked around Amy's apartment and, in a fit of desperation, stuffed all of Amy's jewelry into her pockets. She considered it a bonus after all her years of hard work. It wasn't much, and she was sure Amy wouldn't miss it. As she thought about all the abuse she had endured at Amy's hands, she decided to scour the apartment and take whatever she could find. As she was leaving the apartment a while later, she received a phone call from an unfamiliar number. Hello, is this Charlene? My name is Kyle. I'm a reporter for Her Vision Studio. I'm calling you regarding the post you made today. There's clearly no reason for you to stay with Kaleidoscope, so why don't you join our company? I'm not interested, she said, and went to hang up, 
but his next sentence caught her attention. We're currently investigating, Emma. We can negotiate a price in exchange for any information you can give us about her. Grinding her teeth at the mention of Emma, she said, I need a place to stay. No problem, Kyle responded. Give me your address. I'll head there now, she said. Her vision had been trying to collect information on Emma for months, especially the men they believed she had been with. They didn't think her achievements or recent signing with Kaleidoscope were fair and wanted to expose her for the fraud they believed she was. Charlene stopped her car outside her vision's headquarters, a little nervous. However, she'd already lost everything, so there wasn't much more they could do to her. Gathering her courage, she entered the building and met up with Kyle. He showed her the information he had already gathered and explained, I've been trailing her for two months, trying to find out what she's hiding, and finally captured a photo of her kissing a man. There are even rumors that she's with the CEO of Kaleidoscope. This woman is a liar who keeps claiming she's single, yet meets up with a different man in every country. She looked at the blurry pic. There was no way she could tell who the man in the photo was, let alone tell that it was Eric. What do you want me to do? she asked. Do you have any information about Emma and Eric? Photos? Anything? he asked. All we're missing is solid evidence. I'm sure she'll end up meeting with another man, and I want to be there to get a photo and finally destroy her. Episode 268 Schemes and Consequences Photos Kaleidoscope staff definitely had some, but there was no way they would share them with anyone outside the company. Since Charlene was still technically employed there, getting her hands on a photo wouldn't be difficult. But what about compensation for breaching her contract? The fine was $100 million and not worth the risk. I'll give you anything you want, as long as you get a photo for me, Kyle said. Exposing one of our secrets will have dire consequences for me. That's easy enough to deal with. If one of the staff dropped a phone that you happened to pick up, you can't be blamed for anything. Even if Eric found out, he would target the person careless enough to drop their phone, not you, he reasoned. She contemplated it for a minute and thought it sounded reasonable. What do I get out of it? I'll give you shares in her vision studio. Once Emma's lies are exposed, we'll become famous. You'll have more money than you know what to do with, he said, smiling at her. Just the thought of Emma and the rest of Kaleidoscope's artists groveling at her feet made her exceptionally happy. She nodded her head and signed the contract. All she had to do now was find evidence of Emma sleeping with other artists and hope that everything ran smoothly. But if she got caught, she would wish she was dead. Eric and Emma got home from the celebration dinner, reeking of alcohol. The couple fell onto the sofa. She lay on top of him and rubbed her nose against his neck. I'm really happy, Eric. I can tell, he said, smiling as she snuggled against him. It was rare for him to see her as relaxed and happy as she was that night, especially in front of so many strangers. He would do anything to keep her this happy all the time. So, what else can you do? Can you dance? She asked. Instead of answering, he helped her up and led her in a dance on the slippery tiled floor. She leaned on him and copied his movements. 
Neither of them spoke, but they didn't need to. This moment was just for them. She wished she could stay like this forever. A while later, she asked quietly, Have you thought about what you'll do if the staff at Kaleidoscope doesn't accept our relationship? I've been worried that someone else will cause trouble, like Amy did. If anything happened, I'd blame myself. You were so confident when you went up against Amy, he said. I'd never let someone hurt you, she replied. Of course I'd be angry and defend you with everything in me. He hugged her, a smile gracing his face. Her protection of him filled his heart and made him so happy he could burst. It was nice knowing that she had his back, just like he had hers. I will always give my all and fight back, no matter how scared I am, she said. He froze before wrapping his arms around her and pressing her against the back of the sofa. I don't need you to give your all. I just need you to give yourself to me. She lifted her head and nibbled on his lower lip before intertwining her tongue with his. She wrapped her arms around his neck and murmured, I feel like I fall more in love with you every day. You've only realized that now, he teased. I accept my fate she said, before pushing him down on the couch and covering him with her body. Let me take the lead for once. The following morning, rumors started circulating about Amy being banned from the company. The PR department didn't deny anything, hinting that the rumors might have been true. It was no secret who started these rumors. Kaleidoscope itself. Their company had always been united, so the fact that Amy was brave enough to challenge Eric's authority like this meant that she was planning on leaving the agency sooner or later. Hence, it was better for them to get rid of her quickly. They were sending everyone a message. Anyone planning on disrupting the culture of the company would end up like Amy. She was the first artist they had ever banned so the impact was even more shocking. Amy sat in her hospital room as she read the news on her phone, tears rolling down her pale and wounded face. She couldn't believe that she ever thought she could destroy Eric. What a joke. Now her career was ruined. She cried as she smashed her phone. Surprisingly enough, Luis was the first person to visit her in the hospital. Of course, he didn't come empty-handed. He came with a compromise. Although we don't owe you anything, you've been with us for several years, so Eric has decided to let you keep CC. I'm sure he's only doing this out of pity, she said angrily. What did you think? he replied. Sooner or later... Someone was bound to replace you. Even if it hadn't been Emma, it would have been someone else. Your biggest mistake was hurting Caitlin. She was speechless and turned her head to look out of the window. She finally said, Caitlin has it better than I do right now. That's because she has a conscience. He gave her Cece's information and said, Stay out of Emma and Eric's way and stay out of the modeling industry. He won't be so lenient next time. What else could I possibly do? She laughed sardonically as she held on to the information. I might have lost Emma, but that doesn't mean she'll be better off. Episode 269, Savior. It's not up to you to decide whether or not she'll be better off. You need to worry more about yourself. Louise turned to leave, but looked back when he reached the doorway. I've lured the media away. 
this is your best chance to get out of here. Amy looked at him and said, I know you think I'm pretty. Why don't we have a little fuss before you leave? He scoffed. In your dreams. She laughed quietly as she got out of bed. I don't want Cece, but can you take me home? They'd known each other for six years, and even though they didn't cross paths often, there was no reason for him to be cruel. After assessing the situation, he nodded and said, Go get changed. She quickly got dressed and left the hospital with his assistance. When she got home, she saw that it had been ransacked and was a mess. Everything valuable had been taken. It had to have been Charlene. She was the only one with a key to her apartment. Amy fell apart as she knelt on the floor. Luis offered her his hand as he watched her break down. Unfortunately, the gesture was caught by paparazzi lurking in the shadows of a nearby building. Not long after, a story was released online. Kaleidoscope's artist director is sleeping with Caitlin and Amy and playing both women. Some of the headlines were even worse and claimed that he was only helping her to get close to her. The stories may not have been real, but the photo of him helping her was. Emma was at Caitlin's apartment when she saw the news. The photo of Luis helping Amy had been blown up on the screen, and she glanced at Caitlin as she eyed the picture. Caitlin didn't say anything. She just turned off the TV. Caitlin, Luis isn't that type of person, Emma said. What do I care what type of person he is? Caitlin asked her curiously. Don't tell me you're playing matchmaker. It's impossible. I refuse to be a stepmother, and even if I was willing, Luis will be blacklisted after today. They were clearly together at the time. The media didn't make that part up. She rolled her eyes. Emma, not everyone will find their Eric. I've already been hurt once. I won't let myself get hurt again. Why are you getting so worked up? asked Emma. Caitlin's reaction was over the top and made Emma think she was hiding something. Caitlin let out a frustrated sigh as Emma studied her and said, I was in an abusive relationship with a cheating asshole for 10 years and had three abortions. There's no way a man will want me. I'm damaged good. She held up her hand, halting Emma as she opened her mouth. She looked down and continued, this doesn't mean I'll settle for anything. Luis is good to everyone, and I know he doesn't have feelings for Amy, but I don't need someone with a hero complex who can't help trying to save and comfort everyone. I'd rather find a simple man who's looking for a housewife. Emma felt her heart ache at the pain in her voice. Her past wasn't her fault but she knew it would always haunt her and make her self-conscious. Okay, I'll let the Louise talk go. I'm going to France on the 18th. Do you want to come with me? She asked. Isn't Eric going with you? I don't want to intrude, Caitlin said. She was running from her feelings, but it was impossible to refuse fate. Emma was deep in thought when Eric called. She didn't want to risk upsetting Caitlin again, so she headed into the living room. When she came back into the room, Caitlin looked at her and said, Was that Eric? You haven't been gone that long. It was work-related, she explained. Go ahead. I want to get some rest anyway, Caitlin said. She looked at Caitlin sadly for a second before she turned and left the apartment. Eric's car was parked outside. As soon as he saw her, he opened the car door. Caitlin watched the couple's interaction from the window and couldn't help but feel envious, wondering what her future held. After a moment, she pulled out her phone and called an old classmate. She agreed to a blind date, 
desperate for a relationship of her own. Luke came across Luis after he'd finished his work for the day. He grabbed onto Luis's arm and asked, What's going on with you and Amy? What are you going to do about Caitlin? What are you talking about? What does Caitlin have to do with me? Luis asked, confused. If you aren't interested in her, then why did you stand out in the cold for five hours? You caught the flu because of her, Luke said. I told you, you're overthinking things, Luis rolled his eyes. I would have done it for anyone. Even Amy? Luke challenged. Sure. Your hero complex is going to get you in trouble, Luke said. As he turned to leave, he spotted Charlene. What's she doing here? Louise followed his gaze and looked at Charlene. He patted Luke on the shoulder. I'll deal with this. He turned and headed toward her. She had some nerve showing up here after robbing Amy. He paused suddenly as he thought about Luke's question. Am I getting carried away and sticking my nose into too many people's business? He was used to handling PR matters for his artists and speaking to the media, but he always had a plan. He was professional, and his actions never meant anything. The only time he'd ever acted impulsively was when he stood in front of a government official's home for five hours. Episode 270 What Do You Like the Most About Me? Luis could not explain himself to anyone because he also did not know why he would suddenly feel attracted to Caitlin after seeing her stick up for Emma. He'd been single for so many years. It didn't make sense. No matter the reason, Luis, who had never cared about the rumors created by the media, immediately made a move after the rumors of his indecent relationship with Amy. He quickly exposed a scandal about an artist from another agency and diverted the media's attention. Upon returning to Kaleidoscope, Charlene felt as unwanted as a sewer rat. She thought she was being discreet, but as soon as she stepped through the front door, she was met by Luis and Luke. These two men were meticulous in their work, so there was no way they wouldn't suspect Charlene's motives. Especially since Louise knew Charlene had robbed Amy's home. Charlene had originally wanted to find a fellow manager she was relatively close to. But before she could even lay eyes on the man, Louise had ordered security to tail her. Charlene noticed this and was overcome with anger. She was, after all, a staff member of Kaleidoscope, yet here she was being treated like a thief. Charlene was so angry that she stormed directly over to Louise's office and demanded, What's the meaning of this? Louise calmly closed his documents and looked up at her. It's a necessary precaution. I'm afraid something might go missing at Kaleidoscope. You're going too far, Louise. I'm sure you know better than anyone what happened at Amy's home, she replied in a cold tone. Her face paled, and she was gripped with panic. But her cunning nature persevered. How should I know? All I know is Kaleidoscope hired someone to beat up Amy. Luis lifted his head and glared at her, finally understanding the reason Amy turned out the way she did. He still had to wonder, how did Charlene join this agency in the first place? Charlene wasn't dumb. When it came to business, she was extremely crafty. As for what she said, she was obviously accusing Luis of not having any evidence and was showing that she, too, could go around saying whatever she liked. 
I'll send you a contract termination from the lawyers soon, he said. Charlene's expression hardened. She not yet achieved her goal. However, since this decision had to come from Kaleidoscope's higher-ups, no matter how she struggled, there was no way she'd be able to change Eric's mind. So, without hesitation, she said, You'll regret it. She then left Luis's office, but she did not leave Kaleidoscope straight away. Instead, she headed over to one of Kaleidoscope's waiting rooms. She knew the makeup artists and models had a habit of leaving their phones lying around on the dressing tables, and it was no different that day. Charlene found the right moment, and she pretended to slip, falling onto one of the tables. Be careful, exclaimed one of the artists. Charlene held onto her wrist, pretending to be in pain as she slipped one of the phones into her pocket. Wasn't Amy's manager? Someone commented. Is there something wrong with her? Who knows? From the looks of it, she's probably going insane. No one noticed what Charlene had done, nor did anyone notice their phone had gone missing. After all, losing a phone in the waiting room was a common occurrence. But... Even though Charlene managed to steal a phone, there was no way for her to unlock it. All she could do was take it back to her vision and hand it over to Kyle. I can't unlock it, but there's definitely a photo of Eric and Emma on this phone, she told him. Kyle looked at her with a dark expression as he nodded his head. Are you sure? I can get my IT guys to unlock it. I'm pretty sure. After all, it belongs to one of Kaleidoscope's artists. He grinned. Then, I can't wait to see what happens next. At that time, while other agencies were busy debuting capable newcomers, Global Pictures Entertainment had been taken over by someone new. As a result, their main focus had changed and they were now investing in creating low-budget films. As for Creative Century and H-World, after a brief adjustment period, they were once again relaunched. For H-World, although Charlotte had lost a few important people, they were also receiving an influx of new talent. Star King and Kaleidoscope had both received a setback following recent events. But even though Kaleidoscope had dealt with Amy themselves, Eric wasn't affected too much. After all, Emma was continuing to steadily advance. Meanwhile, Star King's heir had been studying abroad. After hearing about the multiple clashes between the two companies, he immediately returned home. But no matter what happened, no matter how many newcomers Star King produced, and no matter how they tried to use Emma to create a scandal, they couldn't overcome Emma's tolerance and professionalism. Under Eric's protection, she was slowly becoming more mysterious. She deliberately avoided contact with Eric in front of the media, making it harder and harder for them to dig up information. This made the fans who supported them as a couple more and more desperate. Around that time, Star King's heir, Henry Roy, released a pair of twin models onto the world. Within a few short days, they had captured all the biggest headlines. According to rumors, these two models had been trained to suppress Emma and were aiming to be the next Amy Grace. No matter if it was in terms of mysteriousness or attractiveness, Henry Roy was a worthy rival for Eric. He was young, carefree, and more approachable than Eric. His appearance was bound to have a certain degree of impact on Kaleidoscope. Late one night, Emma sat up in bed reading through the day's entertainment news. Amongst the articles was an unprofessional comparison between Eric and Henry. After seeing this, Emma started laughing, 
especially when she saw the part comparing their bodies. Henry was the type of man who liked exposing his body, but Eric never showed off his attractive physique. Others may not have known about his body, but Emma was well aware of it. Although she couldn't deny that Henry's looks were beyond average, when compared to Eric, he was still miles behind. Eric had just finished exercising and returned to the bedroom covered in sweat. Upon seeing Emma laughing, he couldn't help but question her. What are you laughing about? Emma lifted her head and looked at his perfect body. Still chuckling, she shook her head. He approached her curiously and grabbed the entertainment magazine from her hands. After looking at the comparison article, he handed it back to her. Tell me, which part of me do you like the most? Both men were handsome, rich, and capable, with great physique. Most women were attracted to money, but Emma wasn't like most women. So Eric was curious. I like that you're capable, Emma replied in a soft voice, lowering her head. There was a double meaning in her words. After hearing this, Eric lifted her onto his lap and asked, In what way, huh? Emma gasped in surprise as she hooked her arms around his neck. You scared me. Hurry, go have a shower. You're covered in sweat. Answer me first. Emma's cheeks burned red as she said, Every way. I want more detail. Mr. Roberts, you're being unusually silly tonight, she teased, but her heart raced uncontrollably as she wondered, how could any woman answer a question like this? Episode 271 Rumor has it. Compared to Eric's shroud of mystery, Henry accepted interviews liberally. Whenever reporters came across him on the street, if he and his date were in a good mood, he would generously answer all their questions. He exemplified this behavior when he returned to the United States with a gleaming smile. Despite the frigid weather, all he wore was thin board shorts, dark Ray-Bans, and a twin model on each arm. He welcomed the reporters who approached as soon as he deboarded from the cruise ship. The press was eager to write their stories of the young, charming, and very wealthy playboy. Mr. Roy, Mr. Roy, your return to New York has received so much attention that your name headlines almost as much as Mr. Roberts. What are your thoughts on this? Do you mind being compared? In what way do you think you're different than Mr. Roberts? Henry stopped in his tracks and peered at everyone over the rim of his sunglasses before throwing his head back with a hearty chuckle. My thoughts? I'm honored, I suppose, he said with a smirk. As for our differences, maybe our sexual preferences? He pulled the models closer for emphasis and then walked away, ignoring the crop of questions that sprouted in his wake. Henry's mission had been accomplished, and rumors spread like wildfire about the 32-year-old CEO of Kaleidoscope, specifically his apparent interest in men. Since Eric had taken over Kaleidoscope, there had not been much discussion surrounding his dating life. He always kept a low profile and never had scandal. Although he never had any rumors with women, much less men, it made it hard to refute Henry's implications. In sharp contrast, the 27-year-old Henry had gone through nearly as many girlfriends as there were models at Star King. Because Eric had never had a public girlfriend, 
even revealing Emma now would make everyone assume she was being used to cover his secret. Although none of the rumors made headlines, as reporters were still afraid of Kaleidoscope filing slander claims, the online gossip mill frantically churned. Hey, have y'all heard about this CEO of Kaleidoscope? I can't believe it. What does this mean for him and Emma? One fan fretted. Sucks for people who were shipping them, I guess. It's the 21st century, so what if he's gay? Love is love. Henry Roy is straight up garbage. He either lied or is trying to out Mr. Roberts, who's probably just a private guy. He could be married for all we know. Another person inserted. If he's married, then why does he seem so flirtatious with Emma? Someone responded, igniting another thread of conjecture. Uh, Henry talks all this trash, but he isn't even half as good as Mr. Roberts. Lisa yelled in frustration after seeing the news. Clearly, I can see where Star King gets the nerve. Emma stared at the tightly shut office door with a frown. While she was indifferent to insults toward her, she found herself offended on Eric's behalf. There was only so much Kaleidoscope's PR department could do to rein in the rumors. The public was officially interested in Eric's personal life. Even if she stepped out and objected to the rumors, it wouldn't be convincing. What did Mr. Roberts say? He didn't respond, Emma replied. She knew he initially had no intention of getting observers involved in the battle between the two agencies. So he's just going to sit there and take it? And we aren't going to do anything? Lisa asked incredulously. Emma chewed her thumbnail as she contemplated for a moment. She abandoned the sofa and joined her husband in his office. As expected, he was hard at work. She sat by his side and waited for him to finish reviewing some documents. What's wrong? He asked reaching out an arm when he saw the distress written all over her face. I've seen the news online, she said as she leaned into his embrace. It bothers me how Henry is trying to distract people from your work and accomplishments by involving strangers in your personal life. He kept reviewing the documents in his hand while he stroked her hair with the other. You think I'm bothered by these kind of rumors? You're not going to respond? He squinted at something on the paper he was reading as he answered her question. I've already called his father and let him know he needs to get his son in line before I do. You know his father? Although Kaleidoscope and Star King are competitors, our families have been friends for a long time. So, you snitched on him. She let out a little giggle of surprise. She hadn't been aware their families were so involved with each other and the businesses. That's why I've received an invitation to dinner. He finally put down his documents and looked at her. My uncle and his father will attend. It's to talk it out and call a truce. Uncle? Her ear perked at the word. Am I going as well? Are you nervous to meet my uncle? He asked. Her blush answered for her. He continued gently. Not many people in my family know I got married. So you can focus on being my date. So that's it? You're just going to let him off the hook with a truce? She would never have expected things to end so casually. He knew she usually kept to herself and had never taken defamation of her character personally. However, she had taken Henry targeting her husband to heart. Since it matters to you, it matters to me. The piercing look he gave her loaded his response with deeper meaning. 
Knowing he was taking action against Henry eased some of her worry, and she moved her attention to the new subject at hand. When will the dinner be held? she asked. Tomorrow evening. In that case, I'll go pick out a nice dress. Although she would only be his date, it didn't relieve any of her nerves about meeting his uncle. She was anxious to leave a good impression and abandon Eric's embrace in order to fret over which dress she would wear. He shook his head in exasperation at her antics, speaking aloud to the empty room. Nothing scares my wife except meeting my family, apparently. Bored of sitting alone downstairs, Lisa was immediately interested in joining Emma as she watched her rush to the closet. What are you doing? Is there another event I don't know about? I'm meeting his uncle, Emma cried out. Honestly, I'm a little nervous. Lisa understood where her distress was coming from. Emma's family situation had always been difficult and complex, and meeting Nathan's family hadn't gone well. She had low expectations about being able to get along with family, which made her panic over meeting a member of Eric's family more than reasonable. Lisa rubbed her back soothingly. You don't need to be nervous. This is coming from the person who got so scared they hung up on Lou, Emma protested. Don't compare yourself to me, Lisa rolled her eyes. Just be yourself and leave everything else to your husband. She grabbed both of Emma's shoulders and looked at her directly. Emma, put on your runway confidence. It's just another show. Episode 272. Same mistake, different day. That evening, the phone Charlene had brought to her vision was finally unlocked and returned to Kyle. He nervously spun in his office chair until he could build up enough courage to look through it. Most of the photos were from the standoff between Emma and Amy on the night of the celebration dinner. As he swiped through the photos, he couldn't help but compare the two models to one another. Emma really is a rare model. She looks good in everything, he thought. Then he frowned. Too bad she likes to play around with men while pretending to be so innocent. The thought fueled him to keep searching until he came across some relatively intimate photos of her and Eric. In one, she clung to his arm while drunk. In another, he was outright carrying her back to the dinner. Kyle sneered at the photos. Although the news had been filled with conjecture over Eric's sexuality, the photos would have collapsed the rumors in on themselves. Eric and Emma were so undeniably close in these photos. No one could deny that they were a couple. But Kyle decided to bide his time. He cheered to himself. Finally, I have evidence. Emma is finally going to get what she deserves. Caitlin stepped through the door of the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, prepared to meet her blind date. In determination to shed the skin of her past, she had dressed to impress, as if she were headed to an award ceremony instead of dinner. After giving the name her classmate had told her to the host, Caitlin discovered her date had already arrived. She was pleased to discover the Frenchman was timely. Over the years in the modeling industry, she had become well-versed in multiple languages, and she felt pride in her ability to exchange greetings and converse in his native tongue. Her date introduced himself as Brett and then praised her proficiency in French before he ultimately switched to English. 
She hesitantly explained that it was her first time dating in a while after getting out of a relationship with an unfaithful partner. To her relief, she did not find any judgment on his face. He told her about his job as a regional representative of a jewelry company, and he assured her that he was quite single. She was thoroughly impressed by him. They continued to chat at the hotel for nearly four hours before he escorted her home. What a gentleman, she swooned. I can't believe how easy it was to talk to him. She immediately called Emma to report the entirety of the date to her. He didn't care about my past at all, and the conversation was so comfortable. I'm really happy with how it went. Only comfortable? Although Emma was glad Caitlin had an enjoyable time, she found her reaction wanting. Emma pondered silently. Maybe comfortable isn't a strong enough reason for two people to be together. Maybe she's easily impressed because she's been treated poorly for so long. Get to know each other better in time, Caitlin replied cheerily. I have a feeling Brett will turn out to be an amazing man. But Luis isn't, Emma thought. Regardless of everything, I've already decided that we get along well enough. If everything goes well, we could be getting married next year and starting a family shortly after. Caitlin was already planning out her future. Emma's surprise over Caitlin's complete dismissal of Luis multiplied. Fine, try it, but if he shows any red flags, get out. Caitlin sighed at Emma's worry before taking it to heart and begrudgingly agreeing with her. Okay, by the way, what's up with Mr. Roy? Eric isn't just going to let it slide, Emma replied nonchalantly. Only in front of Caitlin could she act casually. Don't worry about us. Just focus on yourself. Don't settle. Caitlin nodded her head seriously, but after she hung up the phone, she found herself slowly sinking against the wall to the floor. Why do I still feel so lonely? She bemoaned. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes. She had requested to jump back into work as soon as possible to welcome her rebirth. The next day, she returned to the agency with her manager and met with Luis, picking up with work where she'd left off. During the morning, Brett called to invite her to lunch. She appreciated that he seemed to be on the same page as her and instructed him to pick her up from the parking garage. Since there was nothing but business between Luis and Caitlin, she acted like usual, following their silent agreement. When they'd finished their work, he stood and asked, Where are you going? Let me give you a ride. No need. Someone is coming to pick me up, she replied in a polite, if stiff, tone. They silently headed to the parking garage together and gave silent nods as goodbyes before they stepped off the elevator. Before he could disappear into his car, he spotted the driver of the car picking her up. He realized with a jolt that he recognized the man. Brett? Without a second thought, Louise rushed over to the car and pulled her away. Louise, what are you doing? She shrieked surprised by the sudden jerk of her arm. Just trust me, he growled, leading her back to his car. She was so surprised by his behavior that she followed him, and they ignored Brett's loud protests from his own car. Once they made their way out of the garage, she turned to him, absolutely seething, and demanded an explanation. His expression was dark and he remained silent as he pulled into an empty lot. Once he'd calmed down enough to speak, he said, How do you know Brett? Surprised that he knew Brett as well, 
Her curiosity overtook her anger. An old classmate introduced us, she replied. Well, they must be a crappy friend because they deliberately tricked you, he deadpanned. Did you not look him up? He's married. Married? She squeaked. You're trying to date a married man. He rubbed his brow in frustration. When will you get better taste in men? He asked rhetorically. Her face burned with embarrassment. At least I'm not two-faced like you, she blurted out angrily. His expression became impassive, and she realized she'd gone too far. She quickly shut her mouth and glared out of the window. Finally, he caved first and restarted the car. Let me take you home. I just want to find someone who likes me for me. Her eyes began to water. So what if I'm an international supermodel? After everything that's happened, people just see me as damaged goods. Just because you see yourself as damaged goods doesn't mean everyone else does, too, he said quietly. Her subconscious screamed that she was about to go too far again, but she ignored it. Well, if you were me, would you want you? When faced with the potential for love, she lost all common sense. No matter how many times she learned a lesson... It seemed she would never learn from her mistake. Episode 273, Preparing for Battle Luis wasn't deterred by Caitlin's off-putting question. He glanced at her as long as he could while driving and answered flatly, no one wants someone who doesn't believe in themselves. Nothing seems to shake him. He always has the sharpest answer for everything, she thought. He pointed out that the issue wasn't whether or not he wanted someone like her. The real problem was that she didn't want someone like her. She dryly laughed to herself. In her emotional turmoil... She'd forgotten that he was also the PR director of Kaleidoscope, and it would take more effort to get an off-guard answer from him. The rest of the car ride was spent in silence as she struggled with her feelings of uncertainty, angst over keeping secrets, and fear. She was tired of being scared. Unused to sitting in silence, he cleared his throat. Your home... She looked up and realized they had, in fact, arrived. Thanks for the ride. Eager to remove herself from the situation, she grabbed her purse to leave the car. Before she could get out, he grabbed her hand. I helped Amy up, but she didn't mean anything to me. She was stunned for a moment, surprised that he'd actually tried to explain things to her. Then... Who does mean something to you? She asked. He let her hand go and gave a wry smile. My daughter. Caitlin huffed as she got out of the car, ignoring his laugh behind her as he drove away from her apartment building. While her anger wasn't completely subdued, it had dimmed slightly in the face of its explanation. She was also tired of walking on eggshells around him. As she entered her apartment, she couldn't help thinking of the classmate that had introduced her to Brett. Did she really do that on purpose? Caitlin wondered. What an awful person if she did. Regardless of the intentions of others, she firmly decided to keep the details of her date turned kidnapping to herself. Whenever Emma's work schedule was free, she liked to handpick Eric's clothes for the day. Particularly, she enjoyed how he stood mostly naked in front of the bedroom mirror as she brought him one outfit after another. It prevented him from starting his day for half an hour, but he couldn't resist anything that would make his wife happy. 
I have something to do tonight, and then I'll head directly to the dinner afterwards. Luke will pick you up, so we can meet at the entrance and go in together, he told her as she carefully buttoned up his shirt. She nodded absentmindedly. Her mind had wandered to the cause of the dinner, and she began scheming of ways to contradict the narrative Henry was trying to spin. He was trying to make it seem like Eric was keeping secrets, so people would be more interested in potential drama than his work at Kaleidoscope. It frustrated her that people were forgetting how accomplished and capable her husband was. When Eric saw the look on her face, he immediately knew what she was thinking. He had suffered through watching people ridicule his lover many times. It always made his stomach churn and his blood boil from the anger that brewed. Rather than caring about the public perception of himself, he was more interested in resolving the situation to bring his wife peace of mind. Everything okay? She nodded again before reaching on her tiptoes to gently bite his shoulder. This was a secret gesture between the couple. While it didn't express whether she was happy or sad, the action was a reminder of their connection. When one was pained, they both were. He simply pulled Emma into his embrace and placed a kiss on her forehead before putting on his jacket. He left their home satisfied with the time they had spent together that morning. She stood by the window watching until his car pulled away. When she placed her hand above her heart, she found it fluttering wildly like a hummingbird's wings. How does he still make my heart race like this? She wondered. It's like we're still newlyweds. Spotting the magazine with Henry's shameless smug face, brought out a small frown. The striking twins on either side of him would be her rivals that night, and although she knew they were not her professional equals, she still felt the burn of competitiveness. Since the purpose of the meeting was for the CEOs to make peace publicly, it was likely that some reporters would be present. She knew Eric would take this opportunity to get revenge before the truce was officially called. A sense of anticipation for seeing Henry getting what he deserved battled with her unease over meeting Eric's uncle. That afternoon, Lisa brought updates from Kaleidoscope while Emma was getting dressed. The phones have been blowing up with people asking and saying all sorts of things. One message even accused Mr. Roberts of cheating on his secret husband with you. The mess Henry's caused. She pulled on her hair in frustration. We already know he's a jerk. We shouldn't be bothered by it. It'll be over soon. Lisa was confused by how calm Emma was and finally noticed her smoothing her dress while she looked in the mirror. Lisa's jaw dropped in awe. Emma, this is different than what you usually wear, but wow, you look gorgeous. The dress was more modest and refined than the dresses she usually wore to events. Typically, her dresses were flashy and displayed some of the latest fashions. The dress she had selected for dinner was a long sleeve and flowed like water across her body. Emmy continued to anxiously smooth and adjust the dress. Do I look too proper? Lisa nodded in approval. Since you'll be meeting family tonight, your outfit is just right. They'll appreciate how elegant you look. Will it seem too deliberate? Since this isn't what I normally wear, Emma continued to worry out loud. You weren't even this nervous when you appeared on the runway of a top brand, Lisa teased. They locked eyes in the reflection of the mirror, and Lisa smiled. You look perfect. Snow floated lazily from the sky outside of the high-end venue the families had booked for the night. 
Everyone had arrived on time, except for Eric, who was aiming for fashionably late. Eric's uncle, John, quickly explained away his nephew's behavior. There must be a lot of traffic because of the snow. Otherwise, he wouldn't be so late. Henry's father, Patrick, gave an amused smile. It happens. I don't mind waiting a little. The flirtatious twin models had not accompanied Henry that night, so he stood to the side, alone and sullen. He's late on purpose to make me squirm. I know it, he griped silently. Near the banquet hall, apart from the families, there was also a swarm of reporters at the entrance, recording every inch of the extravagant venue they could see while they waited for their real subject of interest. Although he had impure motives for setting off the rumor, part of Henry believed there could have been some truth to what he had said. He's in his thirties, and I've never seen him with a woman. Maybe he's really in the closet because of our parents, he mused. At quarter past seven, Emma arrived at the venue, dressed in a long black coat. As if it had been his attention all along, Eric arrived simultaneously and moved to his beloved wife's side as soon as he saw her. She delicately wrapped her arm around his offered one, trying to steal her nerves. He leaned down and whispered in her ear, Don't be nervous. Episode 274, Touching Every Last Nerve. Look, he's arrived. Patrick smiled as he watched Eric and Emma enter the hall, gesturing for his son to stand up. John's eyes slid past his nephew and landed on the curiosity striding beside him. He found Emma's expression impassive but pleasant, as if she was consciously taking in the room without blindly assuming the spotlight for herself. The entire Roberts family, John included, had believed Eric would remain a bachelor forever. He had certainly picked a striking woman to disrupt this belief. Is the inside as good as the outside? John wondered shrewdly. Come, sit. Were you stuck in traffic? He asked gesturing to the chairs next to him. He had expected Eric to graciously accept the provided excuse. Instead, Eric remained silent as he pulled out a chair for Emma and helped her sit. Once he finally sat, he replied calmly, There wasn't any traffic. The expressions across the group shifted at his rudeness. Emma read the room and glanced back at Eric trying to understand what he was doing. She noticed his small smirk and realized it was an opportunity for her to intervene. I'm so sorry. I was actually the one stuck in traffic, and he was too polite to let me come in alone. Thank you for being so patient. She gave a sweet smile to emphasize her gratefulness. Regardless of the truthfulness of her statement, John's demeanor warmed with approval at Emma's action. He respected her initiative to defend her date and charm the group. Below the table, Eric rubbed the back of her hand with his thumb a few times before burying it inside his palm. He was impressed at how quickly Emma had understood his motives and moved to make a good impression. Patrick was equally charmed by her and gave a good-natured wave of his hand. It's no big deal. He pointed at Emma and said to John, I know exactly who this young lady is. She's in the news quite a bit. On the surface, Patrick seemed to be praising Emma's popularity and fame. However, it was also a warning that Eric had not just brought a pretty face to dinner. John turned to his nephew, eyebrows raised in surprise. You know about this? Of course. Good. John completely trusted Eric's judgment. 
since he would brought her to such an important meeting, she was important to him and should be treated accordingly. As a result, he decided to put in a few good words for Emma. It's normal for young people to lose track of time. Of course, compared to Henry, they're still on the right track. He challenged Patrick with a stern look. I dare him to say anything. His son goes through a dozen women every week, John grumbled internally. While the Roberts and Roy families had known each other for a long time, no one could remember the last time they'd actually considered the other true friends. They had already stepped on each other so many times in business dealings that most of the goodwill had already died. Patrick was rendered temporarily speechless by John. He shook off the comment and returned to the main topic. I really feel bad that Henry couldn't keep his mouth shut and created trouble for Eric. Mr. Roy, do you think everything would be forgiven just because you said you feel bad? Eric asked, looking almost amused. If it isn't true, just go prove yourself to the media. What kind of man goes and tattles to my father? Henry snapped in an embittered tone. He had no intention to apologize, and Eric wasn't expecting it. Shut your mouth, Patrick roared at his son. Be useful for more than talking to women for once. It seems Mr. Roy has his objections, so how will this be settled? Eric looked at the father and son expectantly. John, on the other hand, enjoyed watching the show play out. Let's compete so you can prove to me that you are a real man. Henry squinted critically at Eric. Let's do it then, he replied swiftly. Henry didn't know that Eric had fully expected the conflict to come to a petty competition. It wasn't the first time their families had been drawn to blows. What should we compete in? Henry asked begrudgingly. It unnerved him how prepared Eric seemed. We have everything we need here, so let's compete one round at a time. I'll even let you decide on the challenge. If you win just one of the five rounds, I'll consider you the winner. The bar for winning is only one win? Emma thought with alarm. How will Henry ever recover from losing five times? Henry's face turned red as he stood from his seat. Since we are men, we should speak with our fists. For the first round, let's box. You asked for it. Eric gave a tight smile. A word of warning, though. I plan to let the media in. John pointed to the reporters, whose cameras were furiously clicking. He thought this might deter Eric, but his nephew shrugged it off and said... Up to you. Eric pulled Emma up with him and told the group, I'll see you in ten minutes. I'm going to go get ready. If you're getting ready, then why are you... John trailed off, his eyes flickering to Emma. Eric's expression remained composed as he lifted a single brow. I need her. He promptly turned around and guided Emma out of the room. Prior to the meeting, he had arranged for a temporary boxing stadium to be set up in the venue's other ballroom. He left the rest of their group to their own devices while he prepared. John rubbed his withered forehead in exasperation. He hadn't realized his nephew had a sentimental side to him. Henry's eyes followed the couple before he eventually left to get ready as well. Shall we follow? John asked Patrick. We shall. Patrick found himself curious about how his son compared to others and hoped he wouldn't end the night disappointed. Not long after, the reporters were led into the boxing stadium to become the audience for the fight. They began gossiping as they waited for the event to begin. The only reason Kaleidoscope's being so open today is because they want to clear up the rumors, right? 
confusion swirled around the reporters, who hadn't known exactly what to expect by the odd dinner-turned-competition they'd been invited to watch. What rumors are you trying to clear with boxing? Social media is filled with comments praising Mr. Roy's body, so I have a feeling Mr. Roberts is going to show us his body to prove a point, another reporter proposed. But he's never been this petty, a short photographer objected. Then how do you explain this? The reporters located their equipment at various vantage points and continued whispering among themselves. They were more right than they knew. Eric wasn't normally this petty. However, the way the comments had bothered his wife made it necessary to do whatever it took to bring her peace of mind. In this case, it meant fighting back in any way possible and putting Henry in his place. In the private restroom, Emma sighed as she looked at Eric's bare upper body. Her face involuntarily turned red. Maybe I changed my mind. I don't think I want anyone to see your body. It's okay. They can look. Only you will ever get to touch me. Episode 275 float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Boxing was an athletic sport as well as an art form. It required muscle strength, psychological tenacity, and physical endurance. A standard boxing match required five rounds, each round lasting two minutes, until one of the competitors was knocked out for ten seconds. The one left standing was the winner. Eric wasn't in the mood to endure multiple rounds with Henry, so the two men agreed to just one round. While Eric was still in the change room, Henry swiftly wrapped his hand in bandages and put on his boxing gloves. Professional boxers usually didn't wear helmets or armor, so they wouldn't either. He stepped out wearing just a pair of athletic shorts since he hadn't brought appropriate footwear to the meeting. Henry had toned arms and legs, and the rest of his muscles were well sculpted. He was definitely stronger than the average man. However, he was the pretty boy his fans loved to call him. With flawless skin, that made it clear all his muscles were gained from the comfort of an at-home gym. Regardless, he received a roaring applause as he stepped into the ring. Afterwards, he performed some warm-up exercises, enjoying being the center of attention. His family members often suspected that if he wasn't the heir to Star King, he would have found some other way to be famous. He always wanted more attention than an average person would ever experience. John and Patrick were seated in the front row of the foldable chairs. With a disgruntled frown, Patrick thought, This brat. At least he hasn't entirely neglected his body while he makes a fool of himself in the tabloids. Meanwhile, John sat with his arms crossed, deep in thought. As far as he was aware, Eric hadn't thrown a punch in nearly a decade. Even back then... One punch was all he needed to finish the match. He definitely wasn't as young as he used to be, and likely not nearly as fit. Why hasn't Mr. Roberts appeared yet? A reporter asked loudly, as if expecting one of the family members to answer. To be honest, Mr. Roy's body is quite good, another one swooped. He's rich and pretty, and I have a feeling he can throw a punch a quiet photographer mused. The commentary behind Patrick made him swell with pride. Star King had struggled against Kaleidoscope for years, and if his son managed to physically beat Eric, it would bring him some satisfaction. Clearly, none of you actually exercise. You have no idea what in shape actually is. The first reporter began laughing. As if to prove his point, 
His biceps flexed as he adjusted the hold on his camera. I don't know. I've never seen Mr. Roberts work out much. Doubt filled several faces. Another snorted. He lives in Tribeca. Do you really think he goes to a public gym? John couldn't stand the noisy chatter around him, so he cleared his throat, hinting for the reporters to mind themselves in the older men's presence. After feeling his uncle's impatience, Eric and Emma stepped through the entrance of the room. Originally, with the glare of the hallway light behind them, their faces couldn't be seen clearly. As soon as the reporters were able to make them out, they started rapidly talking, taking notes, and snapping photos. A few even stood up subconsciously, scanning his body in wide-eyed disbelief as if blinking would make them miss a crucial moment. Normally, hidden behind a suit, his muscles roiled powerfully with every movement. Eyes hungrily traced his eight-pack and the outline of the pulsing veins in his forearms. The sweat from his worn-up made his tan skin shine, as if he'd been glazed with honey. In a day. Several of the reporters seemed to forget the cameras in their hands, which their peers quickly tried to tap them out of. Hurry up! Take some photos! I didn't know bodies could be that perfect outside of a magazine, one reporter exclaimed. A reporter who had previously defended Eric snorted and said, Mr. Roy looks frail compared to Mr. Roberts. He's not even going to be able to handle one punch. Hearing the commentary turn against him made Henry flame with embarrassment as he glared at his opponent. When people online had voted that his body was better than Eric, he had accepted the results proudly. He had never imagined that Eric would be that fit. When does he even have time to work out that much, he wondered. Henry glanced down at himself and for the first time considered how painful being on the receiving end of Eric's punch could be. Emma followed behind her husband, his coat hanging from her arm. She never hesitated in her confidence in Eric, and was ready to see Henry eat his trashy words. John watched his nephew with admiration, pleased and impressed that he'd been improving his body even further over the past decade. While his face had originally been flushed with anticipation, Patrick's face quickly paled with worry. Quick, snap a few more photos. I have a feeling this won't take long, someone's boss instructed in the crowd. Another person laughed, saying, Mr. Roy is going to think twice before spreading rumors about Mr. Roberts again. Reporters that had been focused on the potential relationship between Eric and Emma for a while were quick to notice her following him. Have they swapped roles? Are they together? They asked one another. The excitement continued to build as Eric stepped into the ring. Henry automatically took a few steps back. He was cautious, but also unwilling to admit defeat. Eric stared calmly at Henry while he wrapped his hands. If you want to forfeit, you still have time. I won't be going easy on you. Before seeing Eric's body for himself, Henry would have laughed at these words. But realizing that Eric could put his money where his mouth was made Henry wise up quickly. He glanced between their bodies one more time before admitting the inevitable to himself. I give up. Jaws dropped around the room, except for the two Roberts men, who seemed unsurprised. I still have four more chances. There's no way he can beat me in everything, Henry reassured himself. Eric gave a small grin, throwing an arm over Emma's shoulders. To be fair, I feel like a bully up here. You probably couldn't even beat her. Maybe I'll go easier on you next round. Henry looked at her and scoffed. Prepare to be disappointed, honey. 
We'll see, she said coolly. Henry avoided his father's gaze as he jumped out of the boxing ring. Humiliation burned through him, heightened by the click of the camera. Patrick spoke in a mild tone. No one could have expected this. What did you plan to do for the next round? You can't beat him in everything. Episode 276, A High Stakes Bet Patrick had always thought of Eric as a goody two-shoes compared to his own son, Henry, who was well known as a rich player. Henry had enjoyed the attention and endless supply of women that the entertainment industry had provided him, but he wasn't suited to a position of power. Apart from his arrogance and a know-it-all attitude, he had nothing to bring to the table. John felt Eric had been a bit cruel to Henry, who had been born into a life of privilege and had always been treated like a precious treasure. No one had ever gotten in his way. Unfortunately for him, Eric existed. The media immediately uploaded the photos they had shot to social media. The so-called truce banquet had started off with a battle, but this wasn't the focus of the people who viewed the photos. Everyone was instead drawn to Eric's attractive body. Next to his heavenly physique, Henry's body looked downright scrawny. Someone catch me. My health points are low and I'm about to faint. God, that body is enough to instantly kill Henry a thousand times over, one commenter said. To the commenter above, calm down. I've already compared his body to all the male models in the industry and couldn't find any better. The only comparable ones are athletes. Ever said that Mr. Roberts didn't have a fit body? I'm so mad. I would have picked him if I'd known how chiseled he was. Of course, experts, this is the ideal male body. He's so rugged and he's overflowing with testosterone. It'd be a shame if that rumor about him being gay is true and his fangirls won't ever have a shot with him. The internet was in an uproar. Originally, there had still been a few people who supported Henry, but after having seen these photos, they changed their preference to Eric. When his sexy photo was revealed, he had become the fitness role model for many people. Having a body like his had become their long-term goal. Lisa stared at his photo on her phone in disbelief. This was the first time she had seen his shirtless body. Apart from Emma and Luke, she was the person who was around him the most. But before she had seen the photo, she couldn't have imagined that his body was so perfect. It's a little warm in here, she said as she pulled lightly at the collar of her blouse and fanned herself with her hand. After putting down her phone, she glanced at Luke. She struggled not to imagine Eric's body. Don't worry, my body might not be as great as Mr. Roberts, but it's better than that scrawny guy's at least, he said. She laughed slightly and put down her phone with a satisfied expression. Let's see how Henry's supporters continue to insult Eric now, she thought. A little while later, she retrieved her phone. After having spotted Emma waiting for Eric, she couldn't but tease the couple. Look at our poor sweet Emma, she said, pouting in a jokingly exaggerated way. She worked so hard to get where she is today. But someone dared to come along and insult her man. Luckily, our married couple's hearts are strongly bound together, and a little name-calling could never break their bond. So my heart and yours aren't bound together? Luke asked. Lisa stared at him proudly. That's a different situation. I'm sure that you had a crush on me first, he said. 
I'm starting to regret that, especially after seeing Eric's body, she said. If you keep this up, you'll be single soon, he replied with a smirk. She smiled as she forcefully buried herself in his arms. Inside the high-class venue, the reporters and photographers chatted to each other in hushed tones as Emma and Eric left the room. What a pity we didn't get to see Eric raise a fist, one said. How dominating would he have been? asked another quietly. Emma accompanied Eric as he changed back into his suit and then helped him put on his coat. I feel awful. If I'd known this would be the result, I wouldn't have let you expose yourself like that. Now the wolves are everywhere, out to get you. What should I do? Don't worry. The only one capable of taking a bite out of me is you. He lowered his hand and hooked her pinky with his finger. If you start to get bored, let me know, and I'll just knock Henry out and end it. I'm actually curious to see what you'll be competing in next, she said as she held onto his hand and led him out of the changing room. She was merely there to accompany him. Even if the paparazzi captured photos of her, she was either holding onto his coat or standing quietly by his side. The couple hadn't done anything overly affectionate, but the photos of them glued at the hip were enough to feed the hungry audience that had been waiting for any morsel of information about Eric. After getting changed, the couple returned to the main hall. The media had been temporarily blocked out to keep Eric from dealing any more damage to Henry and Star King's image. Without the flashing cameras blinding her, Emma relaxed. She wasn't afraid of the media, but she was worried she wouldn't be able to hold back the admiration she had for Eric. If she accidentally showed any hints of affection, the media would latch onto them and keep digging until they revealed the truth of their relationship. The more she'd gotten to know him, the harder it had been for her to control her adoration. She couldn't resist him. She was love-struck, and there was no cure. What will you be competing in this time? John asked Henry as they sat behind the fountain. Henry's eyes wavered as he stared down at the table in front of him. He lifted his eyebrows and said, How about we play a game of cards? Since the media have already left, there's no point in competing in five rounds. Let's just play a simple game of high-stakes Texas Hold'em. What do you want to bet on? Eric asked, his expression completely composed. Henry quickly glanced at him and stood up. He then looked at Emma, who was sitting beside Eric, and said, I want to bet on her. If you lose, the model goes to me. Patrick could tell that his son was deliberately stirring up trouble, and John and Eric had also caught on to him quickly. You can request something from me, Henry said. Eric lowered his head and contemplated for a moment for laughing. <laughs> she isn't a wager. Isn't she just a model? If I lose, you can sleep with one of my twin models, he replied. Eric's expression darkened. Patrick quickly noticed and grabbed onto Henry's arm to restrain him. Are you asking to be taught a lesson, you nitwit? Look at Mr. Robert's expression, he said through clenched teeth. What are you afraid of? Henry asked with a smirk. The more he was scolded the more he wanted to win. While Eric was thinking of a way to teach him a lesson, Emma said, I'll bet myself in your little game, but if you lose, you'll need to announce on all the biggest media channels that you're a reckless jerk. Patrick's face flushed red. Just as he was about to step in and say something, Henry stood up happily. Okay, 
than it sets, she said. But I don't pick on women, so you can team up with Eric. You're practically family, after all. Henry had thought that Eric didn't know how to play poker and was bursting with confidence. Eric glanced at Emma. I might as well play along, he thought. I can enjoy a game of poker with her and show off my skills, too. John sighed. Did they forget to bring their brains to the table? He thought, while glancing at the father and son duo. If they were to challenge anyone else in the Roberts family, maybe they would have had a chance to win. But challenging Eric was an incredibly foolish move. John was tempted to find a quiet spot to have a nap. It's pointless for me to stay here while Eric destroys Henry to entertain his pretty little model, he thought. He certainly won't need my help. Episode 277 Poker Face After Henry and Patrick had left, Eric turned around and looked at Emma. You agreed so quickly. Aren't you afraid of losing? He asked with a doting but concerned voice. I know how to play Texas Hold'em, she replied. With me here, you won't even need to make a move. Are you sure you can beat this spoiled rich kid? Playing around is his specialty, he said. You won't let me lose, she said as she lowered her head and took a deep breath. Don't ask me why I know how to play. It's all in the past. I just want to put up a fight for you. Will you let me do that? She asked as she playfully tugged on his sleeve. He tilted his head, looked at her dainty right hand and laughed. How could I say no? But what if I lose? She asked. Then I'll take the fall for you, he replied with a smile. She couldn't help but laugh. Just trust me on it, okay? He had never doubted her. She'd never been the type of woman to hide behind a man. He also remembers how she said that they knew about each other's habits, but not each other's hobbies. He could accurately state her shoe size, body measurements, favorite food, and color. But when it came to everything else about her, he was looking forward to learning more. I have to trust you because my Texas Hold'em skills aren't great, he said. Liar, she replied with a smirk. His lips curved into a charming smile as he led her into the entertainment hall. Henry had been eagerly preparing for his incoming match at the poker table. Texas Hold'em was one of his specialties, and he was excited to show off. Fancying himself as a king of poker, he fully intended to bully Eric. I might not be able to beat him in a fist fight, but I'll surely make a fool out of him here, he thought as he chuckled softly. Emma started to sit down on a chair in front of the table, but Eric gently grabbed her arm and pulled her back up. She looked at him questioningly before he sat down on the chair first and placed her on his lap. We're sitting like this here? She thought as she blushed, looking down at the ground in an attempt to hide her face. Although they often sat this way at home, she felt a little awkward sitting on his lap in front of everyone. He wrapped his arms around her and said, It's time to start. Do you have to be so clingy even when playing a card game? Henry said, frowning. Are you afraid that you won't be able to hug her anymore when you leave? Let me warn you in advance. We're only playing one round. He sneered before telling the dealer to get started. 
In Texas Hold'em, each player gets two cards face down and can then pick from five shared face-up cards over three stages, the dealer explained. At the end of the round, the person who holds the best five cards after combining the cards in their hand with the three cards from the shared cards wins. A straight flush is the best combination, followed by four of a kind and then a normal flush. Any questions? He looked at Eric, Emma, and Henry, and they shook their heads. Henry had encountered women at the poker table before, but he'd never seen a woman win. This little lady is far too brave, he thought. The dealer started to deal out the cards. Emma received an ace of spades and a jack of hearts, while Henry held a pair of tens. His hand wasn't great, but it also wasn't bad. Since the wager had already been made, there was no point in deciding whether to bet or fold. So Henry instructed the dealer to deal the first three shared cards. A king of spades, a three of diamonds, and a ten of hearts lay face up on the table in front of them. With their hands at the time, Emma had a high chance of getting a straight, while Henry already had a triple. At the poker table, luck wasn't the only important thing. Psychological warfare was also a significant part of the game. Henry had always been lucky on the poker table, but would this time be different? Although Eric held Emma in his arms, he didn't say a word to her as she played. He just watched the cards quietly. She's extremely familiar with Texas Hold'em he thought. She must have played this with Nathan in the past. Jealousy started to gnaw away at him, but when he thought about how she'd said she was fighting this battle for him, he quickly relaxed. Soon after, the dealer placed the fourth shared card face up on the table, an ace of hearts. Henry still had the advantage, and Emma's chances seemed to have dropped all she had was a pair of aces. If the last card dealt wasn't a queen, then she would lose. Henry paused for a moment as he propped his chin on his hand and asked, Do you want to give up? There's just one card left. Eric leaned in and whispered in Emma's ear, Let me look at the last card. If we win, would it be considered my victory? Or yours? she asked. Yours? he replied softly. She nodded her head. With no patience for Henry's taunting, she asked the dealer to reveal the last card. The fifth shared card didn't make much of an impact for either side. It was merely a four of diamonds. Anxiety started to wash over her as the time came to reveal their hands. Her chance of winning had seemed to be high, but without hesitation, Henry flipped over his hand to reveal he had triple heads. She turned her head to look at Eric, and he gestured for her not to move. Show us your hand, Henry said. I trust my luck today. She only had a pair of aces and had clearly lost, but she didn't say a word. You should admit it if you've lost, he said in a gloating tone. I'm sure Eric isn't a sore loser, right? Seeing their reaction, he assumed that they had lost, and he couldn't help but cheer. It seems like I'll get to enjoy your little model tonight. What a pity. Those three words Eric stated so confidently felt like consecutive slaps to Henry's face as Eric flipped over the cards in front of him. The two cards had turned into a queen and a jack. Emma was sure that she held two aces in her hand, but also understood how one ace had turned into a queen. A straight is bigger than a triple. We win, she said with a smirk. Henry looked in disbelief at the straight before him, his face contorted into a grimace. 
he plopped down on his chair and punched the table in front of him. I hope you keep your promise. Remember to tell everyone you're a reckless jerk, Emma said. He stood up and threw back his chair while muttering under his breath before leaving with his father. After they'd left, the dealer said, That Mr. Roy is an experienced swindler. I know, Eric replied. How are you any better than he is after using a trick like that? Emma turned around and stared at him. Mr. Roberts only wanted to teach that jerk a lesson, the dealer interjected. If he'd really wanted to win, he could have had whatever card he wanted. Do you two know each other? She asked Eric as she pointed to the dealer. When I first took over Kaleidoscope Entertainment, I met all kinds of business partners. Back then, I wasted a lot of money on games like this. So, I decided to study them. I haven't really put what I've learned to use lately, but it's helpful to have these skills ready in case I need them. He said, It seems you've never had to experience yielding to someone else's control, she replied. Here I was declaring that I was going to fight for you, and look what happened in the end. She sighed. If he always studies things he doesn't understand when he encounters them, how many other skills has he been hiding, she thought. Even if I hadn't cheated, your cards would still have been better than Henry's, so you're still the winner, he said while gently smiling at her. Episode 278 Wifey Knows Best Emma felt a strange feeling suddenly bubble up inside her. Just how powerful is Eric, really? She wondered. Sensing her deep in thought, Eric wanted to continue explaining things when John entered the hall and interrupted him. You won pretty quickly, he said as he looked at the couple, rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. Eric turned around and looked at him before leading Emma to his side. This is my uncle, John. I didn't get a chance to introduce him to you earlier. Before she could respond, John hurriedly dragged Eric away. Are you serious? You're dating a small-time model? Have you told your parents about this? He whispered. Eric turned and looked at her. Do you think she's not good enough for me? Of course she's good enough, he replied. I can tell she's a good person, and I like her a lot. But what about your parents? When are you going to tell them? I hope you can keep this a secret for now. It's not the right time to tell them yet, Eric said as his eyebrows furrowed in contemplation. You and your father are the same always acting mysterious. I won't get myself involved anymore. You can do what you want. John waved his hand casually. It's just a shame that the truce banquet ended up driving an even deeper wedge between the two of you. You need to hold back a little. If you continue like this, how am I ever going to face old man Roy? Didn't you have fun today? Eric asked, grinning. You already know the answer to that, John said as he looked at Emma. Why don't you give me the honor of having dinner with my potential niece-in-law? Tell me, how many people found out about your relationship before me? Grandpa Chris knows I got married, but he has no idea who with, he said. Married? John covered his mouth in shock. I thought you guys were just dating. Eric flashed the wedding ring on his left hand and chuckled. It's already been four months. In that case, we definitely need to have dinner. Eric nodded and returned to Emma's side. 
John wants to have dinner with us. Is that okay with you? Do you really have to ask? Let's go, she replied. After leaving the venue, the trio went to a nearby hotel. John watched the focused expression on Eric's face as he doted on his wife. What a good husband. You're becoming more and more like I was in my youth. You should treat your wife like a queen, I've always said. He chuckled. I've never forgotten your advice. Eric responded, You're already 32 years old. When I was your age, my son was already old enough to buy his own groceries. When do you plan to have a child, anyway? No rush. Eric brushed him off with a shrug. Emma watched the uncle and his nephew interact. John was a very approachable guy, just like Eric. Maybe it's genetic, she thought. Knowing that Eric always has an endless supply of work, John turned to her and said, Don't let this rascal drown you in housework, and don't listen to everything he says. He's been a control freak ever since he was small. At home, whatever my wife says goes. Eric placed his arm on the back of her chair and raised his eyebrows slightly. That had better be the case. John said with a smile. Emma had started to feel a little warm, so she decided to remove her coat, revealing the beautifully embroidered dress she was wearing underneath. Both Eric and John froze in surprise. Eric leaned over and asked, Why are you dressed so sexy? Who did you dress this way for? John cleared his throat and laughed. Little Emmy here sure knows how to impress her elders. Looking at her like this reminds me of how beautiful your auntie looked when she was young. Anyway, thanks for dinner, and best of wishes to the two of you. He grabbed his coat, smiled, and waved. Then he left the hotel. Seems like I don't have to worry about whether you'll get along with my family, Eric whispered into her ear as they finished their dinner. So, about having kids, she said in a serious tone. In the past, she had never considered the topic of children because they hadn't been married that long. But after hearing John mention a child, she was reminded that Eric was already 32 years old. 32 was indeed an appropriate age to have a child, but to do so, she would need to put the career she worked so hard to develop on the back burner. Let's talk about it when you want one. I'm in no rush, Eric said, leaning back in his chair with his hands behind his head. But, Emma said softly, clasping her hands together. Do I really need a kid right now? In the entertainment industry, plenty of people have children at 40, he said. As they headed home from the hotel, she lowered her head and contemplated. Is having a child totally out of the picture? I don't think it is, she thought. Once upon a time, she'd wanted to reach the pinnacle of the modeling industry to seek revenge against Nathan and Amber. Since then... Her goals had changed, and she wanted to do whatever it took to be by Eric's side. She'd always believed that a woman should have her own career, but she also wanted a baby that looked like him. By the time you're 40, I'll be 33, she reminded him. He nodded. Then let's have one a little sooner than that. It's dangerous to become pregnant at an older age. I'm impressed that you know that, she said. He continued driving. As the traffic light turned red, he turned around and looked at her. After marrying you, I did some reading, he said. Married life is one of the things I wanted to learn about. I really regret not meeting you earlier. She replied with a wistful smile. If you'd met me earlier, 
Our relationship might have been unstable. I used to be an argumentative kid with a bad temper, wifey. He flashed a goofy grin. I really want to see that side of you, she said, squeezing his arm playfully. The next morning, Henry posted on social media that he had lost a bet, and his punishment was to admit that he was a reckless jerk. The majority of the media had found out that Eric had beaten Henry. In an instant, he became a joke in the industry. From what they'd heard, on top of giving up the boxing match, he still couldn't beat Eric in poker, even while cheating. This was only a small piece of the full story, but it proved one thing. No matter how much Star King struggled, they would never be able to escape kaleidoscope's clutches. The internet buzzed with gossip about Eric, Henry, and Emma, as the comments on Henry's posts and the media coverage rolled in. If anyone was to blame, it'd be Henry's big mouth. Mr. Roberts slapped him so fast. He's a man of action for sure. Dare Henry say our Mr. Roberts is gay. But that he's just jealous that Mr. Roberts can drive any woman wild. If he's a ladies' man. Judging by how he messes around with multiple women a day, he must be riddled with STDs. If not for Star King support, he couldn't even dream of being a celebrity. I don't care what you guys say. I just want to say I completely respect Mr. Roberts. Did you guys notice that Emma was in the photo too? She was the perfect picture of a dutiful wife supporting her husband. If only they'd come out and admit everything. They're causing us to have to do so much detective work to figure out the real story. How tiring. While everyone was focused on this topic, one commenter interrupted and posted a juicy rumor. Emma's been sleeping with multiple men. She'll be abandoned sooner or later. Just wait and see. Are you? Are you crazy? Jealous of her. Emma has at least three men on the side. Just wait for the evidence to be revealed. Episode 279 Persistent Paparazzi. If you can, show us some evidence a commenter requested after reading the rumors circulating online that Emma had been sleeping with men other than Eric. The man who had originally started the rumor couldn't resist and posted a photo of Emma kissing Eric outside the manor in London. In the photo, her face wasn't in high definition, but her features could be clearly identified. As for Eric... Because his back was facing the camera and his body was blocked by a car, it was impossible to tell he was the man in the photo. All that the gossiping commenters could see was that Emma was kissing a strange man in the photo. Comments quickly piled up, demanding more evidence of her scandalous actions. Just wait and see. There's more to be revealed promised the original poster. Come on, show it to us. Oh, God. Is he really, Emma? Can anyone dig up some useful information? Quick, take screenshots and save the picture. Don't let Kaleidoscope's PR get rid of the evidence. The man never replied. Soon after he posted the photo, he disappeared. Only a few people had known about the photo when it first leaked but it quickly spread through Emma's fan club and ended up on the hottest search rankings. Emma, hurry and have a look at this, Lisa said after having seen the photo. She rushed over to sit on the sofa next to Emma and then leaned against her and asked, When did this happen? Was this photo of you and Mr. Roberts? Emma tilted her head and examined the photo. This was taken when we were at the manor, she confirmed. The photo seems to have been taken from a strange angle. 
Lisa said as she analyzed the photo. Mr. Roberts' manner is extremely secure. A stranger couldn't possibly have gotten inside. So how did this photo happen? Were you stalked by a paparazzi? She shook her head. I'm not sure. If the photographer hid this photo away for so long, they must have had special plans for it. Why did they decide to make a move now? Hearing this question, Emma once again shook her head. I'm not sure about that either. Then what are you going to do about this? Lisa leaned back on the sofa and crossed her arms. Louise can handle matters like this. You shouldn't stress about it. Help me pack my luggage instead. I need to go to Fram. Emma seemed to be unaffected by the photo. After all, the man in it was Eric. But if someone tried to use this photo to defame her, sooner or later, their true relationship would be exposed. After a short moment, she turned to Lisa and said, Use your contacts to investigate where this photo came from. I have no idea, Lisa replied, frowning. It seems like the public hasn't had enough of you two. If we give this issue too much attention, that sneaky paparazzo will win. Let's not waste any more time on it. Emma got up from the couch. Henry sat at his office desk, exaggeratedly furrowing his brow as he casually scribbled on some documents before folding them back up. He yawned loudly as he flipped through the headshots of some of Star King's artists. If I'd known that I'd lose to Eric and embarrass myself so badly, I wouldn't have challenged him in the first place, he thought, balling his hands into tight fists. Mr. Roy, a voice said through the closed office door. Startled, he quickly snapped out of his thoughts. Come in, he said impatiently to his assistant, a man named Jack. After slowly opening the door, Jack approached him with a phone and presented it to him like it was a precious treasure. Mr. Roy, this surely will make you happy, he said. Why would it make me happy? Henry grabbed the phone and saw the photo of Emma kissing an unidentifiable man. What is this? he asked, his eyebrows raised. The public is rapidly spreading a rumor that Emma Miller's private life is a mess. They say she's been cheating on Mr. Roberts with multiple men at the same time. She was rumored to have been sleeping around before, but there's no solid proof. Now, some evidence has finally been posted, Jack explained excitedly. If the rumors about her are true, and Eric continues to be her manager, even though she's cheating on him, don't you think you'll feel better? Henry had remained quiet the entire time. He simply stared at the phone in a daze. Why did you think something like this would make me happy? Jack was stunned. His face swiftly turned red. When I started the rumor that Eric is gay, people believed it because it came from my mouth. But I was just starting trouble for fun. What is this garbage? Henry threw away the phone. How is this sketchy photo solid proof? He said, making air quotes with his fingers, mockingly. But the rumors are spreading like crazy. Jack replied softly, hanging his head low in shame. Emma's already been defamed multiple times. It's normal for her, he said with a laugh. Knowing Eric, he'll take care of this slander easily. I need to turn up the heat. What are you planning, Mr. Roy? Let's take note of Emma's schedule. I want to pay her a surprise visit. He started to cheer up. Since her private life is already rumored to be a total disaster, I might as well add to it, he thought. Just the thought of Eric's reaction made him grin uncontrollably. 
Do you want everyone to assume the man in the photo is you? You're a smart one. How long has Eric ruled over Kaleidoscope? I wonder if he'll be able to handle a blow like this. After speaking, Henry suddenly felt that the documents in front of him weren't so annoying, and the models that depended on talent for a living were no longer disgusting. But, Mr. Roy, Emma's schedule isn't easy to get a hold of. Go think of something. Contact Customs and tell them to put Emma's name on their watch list. As soon as she leaves the country, let me know. Jack understood that there was no changing Henry's mind. Even though he'd been put in a difficult position, he couldn't refuse his boss's demands. All he could do was nod politely and then leave the room. He'd been asking for trouble himself, but had never expected Henry would use this opportunity to attack Eric yet again. He simply wanted to cheer him up so he could get some work done. Henry wasn't unskilled. He simply enjoyed the freedom of the outside world too much and didn't care about work or power. Worst of all, he brought this playful attitude with him to the agency. Since Star King still had the top brass standing guard, he hoped to continue playing around as long as possible. Eric had just come out of a video conference when he heard about the photo. Luis entered Eric's office with the information he had gathered. He had not only the photo and accompanying news article, but also the IP of the person who had released the photo. He even had a few suspects already. After seeing the information, Eric's expression darkened. He put down the papers and pressed his fingers against the table. These suspects. Follow them and investigate them. I want to find out how they got that photo. I've already instructed my people to handle the matter, but by the time I receive the results, you and Emma will already be in France, Luis explained. Just help me find out who did it. Eric looked at the photo as he reminisced on the day of the kiss that it had captured. That was the day I had to return to New York, he thought. I had no idea such a gusty paparazzo was stalking us then. Most importantly, investigate her vision studio. He remembered that Emma had run into this photographer multiple times, a man named Kyle. Perhaps he's involved somehow, he thought. I've never heard of them before, Louis said, as he thought carefully about how to approach this delicate situation. Episode 280, Poison Ivy. Kyle had wanted to use the photo of Emma's mysterious liaison to gain instant fame, so he kept it a secret until he could reveal everything at once. But he'd never expected that one of his staff would be so impulsive as to place her photo directly online without his permission. Inside the hidden office, he glared at the staff member that was shifting back and forth nervously in his chair and was tempted to chew him to pieces. I must be having a stroke of bad luck to have hired trash like you. If you were my cousin, I would have fired you on the spot. The man clutched his head as he trembled. He knew that the people at Kaleidoscope were trying to hunt him down after what he had done. Hurry, pack your bag. How long do you think it'll take for Kaleidoscope to find you? If they do, you're totally screwed. So you'd better not leave my sight. The staff member had acted on impulse and had just realized the consequences of his actions. He slowly stood up on his wobbly legs and headed back to his own office to pack his belongings. Meanwhile, Kyle had decided he would have to completely abandon the hidden office. If Eric finds out about this, I'm done for, 
she thought. Louise had never heard of her vision studio before. Among the multiple media companies, they didn't even have a ranking. But Eric had instructed him to place all his focus on investigating them. He'd clearly already figured out that this issue had something to do with their studio. For such a small studio to have gotten their hands on such a scandalous photo of Emma kissing a man, they must have been stalking her for quite some time. At the same time that Emma's photo was revealed, Caitlin had also attracted some trouble. She'd been contacted by a top domestic lingerie brand called Ivy that had invited her to appear in the finale of their New York City launch show. According to their contract, she had only been required to wear one set of lingerie for the finale. But when it came to the rehearsals, they had requested for her to change into three sets of lingerie and demanded that she pose in compromising ways. She had used the contract to reject their demands, but they insisted on clinging to her. They'd even dragged her onto the stage and forced her to complete the rehearsal. Due to her status as a lingerie model, she wasn't normally subject to this kind of rude treatment. But Ivy had connections to the underworld, and status meant nothing to them. Soon after that incident, Caitlin had been defamed yet again. The person insulting her had said she was a washed-up model who really didn't know how to act like one. While she was busy being harassed, Louise received a phone call from her assistant, Helena, who had found an opportunity to secretly make a call. His face turned pale, and he reported the incident to Eric. Ever since Henry returned... We've had even more problems, he pointed out. After careful research, this was the conclusion he had reached. Henry and the boss of Ivy had become friends when they were overseas together a long time ago. But Luis was far more worried about Caitlin's safety than he was about Kaleidoscope's problems. Eric stood in front of the floor-to-ceiling window and looked outside. He turned around pulled out his phone, and gave Patrick Roy a call. Old man Roy, he said, then paused for a moment. It's Eric, Patrick answered. What's the matter? Eric was silent briefly, for he gave out a gentle laugh. <clears throat> if Henry hurts my bottom line again, I will have no choice but to knock him out. Oh, What's he done this time to make my favorite Mr. Roberts so unhappy? Patrick said in a teasing voice. Do I sound like I'm joking? Eric's voice suddenly turned cold and firm, making those around him shudder. After hearing his tone, Patrick realized he couldn't just brush him off. He restrained his voice to a whisper and said, I'll try my best to control him. Being threatened by a younger man made him slightly angry, but there was nothing he could do. As he was often walking a fine line right under Kaleidoscope's nose, he had never dared to retaliate. Is there any reason you're warning Star King like this? Louise asked after Eric hung up the phone. I wasn't warning them. I was merely letting them know before I make a move. He returned to his office table. This afternoon, Emma and I will fly to France. Make sure to deal with the photo situation. Don't worry, the photo hasn't spread very far, Louis said. Just wait a couple of days. When other news breaks, everyone will forget about it. But I'll make good use of my time and find the source of the photo either way. You can count on me. He nodded and flashed a reassuring smile. But you're not planning on announcing your relationship with Emma? I promised her I would announce our marriage after six months. Unless I have to reveal it as a last resort, 
I want to try my best to keep my promise. When he'd finished speaking, he locked away some important documents before retrieving his car keys. But if someone wants to play games with me, I'm more than happy to play along, he continued. So what if I reveal our relationship? As for Ivy, if they insist on using their underworld background, then we should stoop to their level and use underworld methods to deal with them. Understood. The news of Kaleidoscope hunting down her vision studio quickly spread throughout the entire industry. While tracking down Ivy's location, Luis received a phone call from his assistant, notifying him that they had located her vision studio's whereabouts. He immediately turned his car around and headed for the building where the studio was located. But by the time he had arrived, the studio was already empty. All that was left was some scrap paper with her vision's logo printed on it, sitting in the trash barrel. We just wanted to talk to their boss. Did they really have to treat us like we're a couple of thugs? Why'd they run away? Luis's assistant complained. When someone feels guilty, they'll naturally try to run away. They didn't want us to catch them because they knew what they'd done. Luis replied as he carefully analyzed the studio and searched through every possible hiding spot, including the balcony. What's up with them? They either colluded with someone shady, or they have more dirt on Emma and are afraid Kaleidoscope will find it, he guessed. He began to head for the bathroom, but was interrupted by another phone call from Helena. Ivy's going overboard, she said in a huff. We really need your help. You continue the search, he said to his assistant. Collect as much evidence and useful information as you can. With that, he left the building and rushed to Caitlin's location. With her fame and Kaleidoscope's backing, it had been a long time since she'd encountered such unreasonable demands. Ivy had completely ignored their contract and weren't afraid of Kaleidoscope. They had forced her to change into three sets of lingerie and do poses she hadn't agreed to. Her manager was crying from anger below the stage, and Helena was repeatedly calling Luis, trying to get help. A forceful collaborator like this was shameless and frightening, and they couldn't do anything to stop them. As it was a rehearsal... The venue only contained staff, and she had only brought along her manager and Helena. Ivy warned that if she didn't follow their demands, none of them would be able to leave. She was afraid they would get violent, so she could only hold back her anger and follow their orders. After all, this wasn't the first time she had been humiliated. I can handle this she thought, while clenching her jaw. Caitlin, you're doing the wrong pose. Let's start again, the show director demanded. She stood blankly on the stage, when suddenly Luis burst through the front door of the venue, followed by a line of eight bodyguards. Am I late? he asked with a smirk. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.